right, everybody, and welcome to our Saturday Rogue Tech stream. Glad you could all join me for this one. Hello, Raider. Hello, the Gna. Not quite sure how to pronounce that. Besides that, and uh, yeah, welcome to the stream. We're going to be continuing with the Black Sheep Squadron as we are a couple of months into the campaign so far, doing all right. As you can see, we don't actually have anything broken in the timeline at the moment, so we're doing rather okay. So uh, let's do a quick, just sort of get ourselves back re-acclimated to where everything is in the mech bay. Okay, we got our brand new uh, raider here, or rapier right here. So that's our fifth mech that we recently picked up. We've got our fuller little quartet here that we spent like about two months actually finalizing, and they all appear to be in good order as well. We should build this at some point, but I don't think it would be the most entertaining thing in the universe to start off the stream by constructing one. And also at the same time, I think it would cost us a pretty considerable amount of sea bills to actually, you know, repair everything on this. Actually, not super terrible. Hmm. Actually, could probably get that underway. Because we are just at about a million sea bills, and it is about the end of the month where we're about to spend 500,000 sea bills on things. So, if we are... Yeah, we're building the lounge, so that's all there. Pilots are a day away from being ready to go. Huh. Yeah, we apparently left off on a pretty decent note for uh, getting everything rocking and rolling. So... Let's go see what kind of contracts are available, just so we can be prepared for tomorrow when the mission will actually begin. So we're dealing with quite a few lower level missions. Are we still in Galatia? I have been away from this for a Yeah, we are- okay, so getting myself once again used to this group instead of the Rumblers. Alrighty, so we have been doing missions for Steiner, but we're not exactly wedded to the idea at the moment. We may actually move away towards other things, and we should probably keep our eyes not bigger than our stomachs at the moment so that we can actually pull off whatever mission that we've got. A one and a half cleaning out the Mercs. It's against the Lyrans, though, which would be a little bit difficult to deal with. I'd prefer something more against pirates, if that's at all possible. So an assassinate mission for two of nine might actually be the way to go. And we may actually take this one for all cash, just because two of nine salvage is not a whole heck of a lot. And if we did take it for all cash and we got into a mission where we could take several other lances, too, for bonus money, that might be worth almost a million sea bills. Uh, turn to the tables is a destroyed base, but it's only one skull. And a whole bunch of destroyed bases. We don't want to be here on this planet for much longer, I feel. So we will wait until tomorrow, and I'll stop. And set ourselves out for... As soon as we get our pilots uh, dedicated, we shall set out on that mission and give us a little bit of extra spending money. So Black Sheep herself obviously is going to go for piloting. 209 Hero Mech and Unique Equipment. Yes, odds are that would be the way. <laughs> In general, that's what it likes to do is, or, you know, we could take it for two of nine and then it's like mostly vehicles. So we've got the black sheep all set up. Apex, uh, she has nothing. Ek has a whole bunch, but we're not training him up until we need him. Flatline could get a level of gunnery, but I don't think I want to bother at the moment because this hatchet man isn't exactly a super great gunner. Kind of prefer to get the level of piloting, although we are quite a ways away from it. Punisher himself is ready to go, and the Punisher, I think, will also be a shooting scooter. We're going to give him the uh, the multi-shot as well as the ability to run immediately after a mission. Both Sumo and Succubus are currently waiting. Hello, Sean. Welcome to the stream. Yes, you're here on time for once. You're not showing up at the very end. Five minutes of the stream left to go. So congratulations. You've made it. All right. So dead or alive, do we take it for salvage? We don't need to take it for money, but we are starting to run out of missions on this planet that we can take for money and get out of here. There is also a general mission, but that's for two skulls. And that would probably be pretty difficult as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's against pirates, so it's going to be pirate tech. So I'm not super thrilled on pirate tech, so we're going to take it for this one for cash. I want to get out of this planet soon, and so the moment we can do that, probably at the end of the month, we'll probably be heading off towards a different planet, and we'll build, well, probably another two missions or so. We'll uh, rebuild our rapier on the way out so that by the time we make it to another planet, we'll be somewhat ready to go. Speaking of that rapier, we got to come up with an idea of what to do with it. We could turn it into like every other rapier ever devised, which is just throw a whole bunch of additional equipment on it for spotting and the like. But that seems a little bit boring, although probably the most useful way of doing things. We could also try and turn it into another Arbiter, but the Arbiter right now is very nice. Although, I think, does the Reaper have two energy mounts on each arm? Because if so, that might not actually be a terrible thing. But right now I am kind of leaning more towards the missiles, missile side of the coin on this one. And I forgot to mention in the Discord to everyone that we are in fact streaming... If I can remember how to spell Rogue. Uh, deck. Black Sheep. Squadron. 
that's good enough. All right, uh, and for those of you interested, I'm just going to throw this out right here early in the stream. That way it'll just sort of sit in the chat in case you ever look towards it. Uh, here is the link to the Discord where we hang out on occasion. I try and answer questions whenever asked. Luckily, they don't ask me many things, so it's a nice, quiet Discord. We are a very chill and mellow group, so if you do join, try and respect the fact that we're chill and mellow and not looking for fights. Alrighty, so we are spawning in a location which gives us a little bit of time to deal with the initial lance first, and if we kill that lance we may get money. I should have checked that and I did not. Flatline! It's time to get going. Uh, you have stealth armor, don't you? Yes, you do. Okay, so he'll be a little bit more safe to be putting out there. Now, the one of the things with stealth armor is it will start to reduce the further we move them. Uh, do you think I'll start making DCS streams? Um, well, we do them on occasion. It's not really part of our normal content, so it'll happen kind of when it happens. Spro kind of wants to get, to get together tomorrow to do a little bit more flying, so there may be one then, but I can't guarantee anything at the moment. Trying to get another one of my friends who really struggles to find enough time in the day to do things he also wants to play, so... So yeah, uh, we we probably will do more DCS streams, but it's not going to become like a regular thing. It'll be more ad hoc. I'll ask him, hey, do you want to stream? And if he says yes, then we'll stream. And if he doesn't, then we won't. Uh, I don't really see the point of streaming DCS unless I'm streaming with other people, as it can get a little bit boring to watch, I feel. Awaiting orders. Okay, let's get you... Ooh, I should remember that way up there is where they normally spawn. So going down may not be the best idea. Ha <laughs> ha! We found them all. Okay, we've got a rapier, we've got a stinger, we've got a wasp, and we've got a locust. Not the worst thing in the world. The rapier is actually, honestly, the most deadly thing at the moment. And holy crap! She is just seeing absolutely everything. That is impressive. So the wasp has listened kill ammo on board, so he's actually a fairly advanced wasp. That's pretty impressive. Uh, but we don't have a shot on either of the other ones. Uh, fun fact, in case you didn't know, we now have wasps, not not this sp specific download at the moment, but the, both the wasp and the stinger have received the modeling treatment. Uh, the modelers came together and created them. Holy crap, girl, you missed most everything. That was really disappointing. Uh, but yeah, the modelers have gotten together and started to actually make more models, of which the wasp and the stinger have both gotten some love. And so we'll have their own personal models all set up in uh, relatively short order. Uh, I think the next version of Rogue Tech we're going to update, update to will have that, and uh, I, for one, am looking forward to it pretty considerably. Do we want to just go right on top of these guys? I think we do. Well, we need to get in close anyway so we can start hitting them with the axe, and that requires us to be nearby. 59... 57.9 is perfect. How do you see what weapons they're using? Um, well, Apex has a fairly decent tactic skill of 5, and she's also got a whole bunch of other equipment on board. I'll mouse over her mech in a second so we can sort of show off all the stuff that she's got on board. But yeah, high tactics, plus she's got a decent electronic warfare suite in, on board. Enemy turn. But I can still select her stuff. Let's see, she's got... Ooh, mean. She is mean. Somewhere in here she has some form of a... Electronic countermeasure or warfare suite. She's got a pirate uh, fire control system. And where is it? Huh. Well, somewhere around here she's supposed to have it. Maybe they can't see it. Yeah. So we have an altitude advantage, which gives us an advantage on seeing things. We can see everybody, and we have a fairly decent tactic score. Oh, good. You're coming to me. That'll make my life so much easier. And you're a locust. Well, actually, it looks like you probably would cause more damage if you shot me, but I suppose if you want to kick, that's perfectly fine. Ten damage onto our leg. It was indeed our leg, so we are absolutely fine with that one. And the Punisher probably has a really nice shot, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, if we went up top, he could definitely do it. How about if I swapped these over to... No, not Hotload. Hotload is a bad, bad mistake. I want dead fire. So if we want dead fire, what are we looking at here? 25? Not great. Can I get a back shot on him? Uh, I can. I absolutely can. I think we're going to take it just for getting in there. Good thing the Locust doesn't fusion cannons. Well, he would have had to actually shoot them, which he didn't take the opportunity to do. Uh, ooh, that's not terrible at all, but you know what? I am going to shoot this Locust. Because even just a couple of hits could be absolutely devastating to a small enough mech, and that was beautiful. I think the Black Sheep herself may be able to come in here with a decent follow-up shot. In fact, she could even punch him if she wanted. Uh, she's not going to, because she's going to shoot him absolutely. He has busted his gyro, which will make him a nice, easy target, and we're going to focus on him down. And then we'll have uh, we'll have the Hitman, or not the Hitman, the Hatchet Man knock out the other one. A little bit of overkill there, if I'm completely honest. Probably should have only fired with some and fired some others into the Stinger. 
But hey, I'm gonna take it because it was fun. So who's left at this point? Oh, the rapier. The rapier's gonna come up and punch my arbiter. That's an interesting decision. And he's gonna actually hit. Okay, so the arbiter's gonna go down a level. But the arbiter is quite quick, so hopefully and has a fairly decent tactic score. Ooh, we got tagged a bit. So, do we get double tagged? We can take this opportunity to figure out if we can get tagged and taggered. Let's find out. So, target was acquired and tagged. Tagged yo ass for plus two. So, yeah, tag and tagger both stack, it appears. So, we're going to have to use that in the future. And remember, uh, can I get a good shot on... Well, honestly, you? 63 is not terrible at all. Is that right here? It's 56. Yeah, I'll take the 63 because I think I can make it. And it's a 50. I really would like to be within the defensive... Nope, we're going to have to be just close to him. So we'll go for the 63 here, see if we can't annihilate this thing or so that we can then run over to smack up the wasp. Because flat... Oh, we're going to tie with it. That should be good enough. Okay, managing to miss with all of her guns. That was an interesting plan there, Black Sheep. I think you should try and work a little bit harder on some decent accuracy here so we can actually get some work done. Stinger is now going to get to move. Wait, no, you? What? The Stinger Reserve or something? Managing to miss the Arbiter in its entirety, which is very lucky for us. We will be able to wrap around, hopefully. That Rapier does not do very well. It's only rolled a 14. That's pretty... That's a surprise to me. Okay, Flatline. Um, kill this, because he hasn't moved yet. There's going to be an 87% chance, but I think this might be able to do it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And again, we took this mission for all cash, so we don't need any spare parts. So blow them up when you can find them. Enemy turn. That will be... Oh, we got a long range from the support unit. Five missiles, so an LRM-5, nothing too dangerous so far. And it is supposed to be pirate tech, so I don't imagine it's going to be terrifically dangerous. Hi, I'm going to get around behind you and basically light you the heck up. Blast him with everything. Because I think this is going to be a little private battle there, so the Haywire launcher. Ooh, just, mm, not good. Okay, so that worked out quite nicely. Uh, I would like to also kill you. If, you know, you'll be at all receptive to the idea. Blast him in the back. Probably should be saving some of these hot-loaded missiles, but I think we've only got one more target that he's going to be shooting at, so I don't really care all that much. So we'll blast into him, knock him down completely, and we'll let the rapier do whatever that rapier is going to do. Fire with a flamer. That's an interesting idea you had right there, considering you had a whole bunch of other weapons that you could have used and you decided not to. Uh, we shouldn't have any trouble wiping him out then. Apex, uh, please do that whole wiping out business. I think you can manage it, even though we are going to cook a little bit, but that's fine. So, boil it. Or, you know, you can miss a couple of very important shots, but tore off the other side. That's enough for the pirate engine to be completely annihilated. That's the three crits that we required, and we've tore it apart. So that, I believe, is a 15% increase in cash. That'll be useful. And he's lost his spotter, so if he wants to do anything, he's actually got to come up and fight us. Uh, which I assume he will at some point, although Flatline will probably be able to just axe him if he runs into him. That'll be kind of the plan. But we don't want to let him get too far ahead. We'll have Punisher follow him up. That way they can work together. Also give him an opportunity to chill out all of that heat that he managed to build up. With his two medium lasers and his LM30s. These dead fires are incredibly useful. Very happy that we have them. Black Sheep herself also needs to chill out a little bit. But we're all going to move it together as a group. That's the most safe way of doing this. Since I don't anticipate any need to flank things. We're just going to overpower him with all our firepower. Oh, he can see us. Interesting. <laughs> oh, I'm so very glad that I took this as a cache. Because it's an... Oh, wait, no, never mind. It's Oxide. Oh, Oxide is a special gender with a whole bunch of LRM-5s on board. That would have been nice to steal, but only two parts. Wouldn't have gotten us anywhere too far on that one. So we'll get the Arbor up. She has no target. So chill out. And Flatline will also sprint forward. He'll be able to engage next turn. I'm positive. Just had to make sure that that was road and not no explode area. I'm going to hide slightly behind this. Hopefully Oxide will peek out around it and we'll be able to jump on top of him and smash him with a hammer. Or in this case, you know, an axe. A little axe. Hatchet. Like the book. Although he hasn't lost himself in the wilderness after a random Canadian crash of an airplane. And the crab will come up. If Oxide is smart, Oxide will move quickly in order to... Oh, I meant to run you, not walk. In order to defend himself, but it doesn't look like Oxide's going to be incredibly smart, if I'm completely honest about things. Uh, to get a shot, I could... You know what? Uh, no, I don't want to risk that. Oh, luckily, there is a tile I can move that gives me an unobstructed shot from cover. Well, not cover, but, you know, mineral fields 
and land on into him. Maybe we can provoke him to get out of the area. So imagine hit him twice with the ER medium lasers. Not terrible with that one. And kind of makes up for all the misses that uh, the black sheep has had so far. Yep, and he came out around. Hello, I'm too close for you to use your LRMs on me. Ah, uh, you can try, but that was a really bad choice. He's dead. That was sloppy. Because Flatline's here, and Flatline can just get right behind him and cut him in half. Goodbye. My weight into it. Yep. And again, no point in trying to save it. Yeah, it is a hero mech, but it's That's Oxide, so it's... It's not like it was something that I really cared about saving. <laughs> Oxide is a Jenner. At the end of the day, a Jenner is never going to be something that I care too much about. Jenners are cool, don't get me wrong, and they're one of the best light mechs in, in lore, but they're not something that we're looking for. We're looking for something a little bit more powerful, a little bit larger, uh, something in the 55 to 70 ton range. So if you happen to run into those, we would definitely like to have it. Standing by. Okay, so we can just... This, this Arbiter is just blisteringly fast with its 240 rated engine on only a 35 ton mech. To oh, it's lovely. I adore it. And yeah, we'll get most people in. Uh -huh. Yeah, next turn we will all be in the AVAC zone and able to get the heck out of here. I wonder if we're taking the tunnel. Well, obviously not, because, you know, Sumer Ray's gonna come down and drop in with the dropship. Are you kidding me? Flatline's gonna end up one tile away from being in the drop zone, which is gonna force us to remain free for an entire extra turn. Well, that's unfortunate. Punisher walking in with aye, style aye. in his trebuchet. Specially armored additional firepower trebuchet that he is. Okay, Apex Brace. Flatline walk into the area. And we're out. Hello, Simi Ray. Don't crush this place. That would be very bad. We would not appreciate that at all. Alrighty, so that'll be hopefully around eight, nine hundred thousand ish C bills. And if that's the case, yeah, nine hundred one thousand C bills. That totally covered everything because it was a 25% bump for knocking out that support lance. Uh, you took no damage, you took like five points of damage, you took like five points of damage, and you took no damage. So that was beautiful. And we picked up some SRM ammo, which we apparently needed. I shouldn't complain too much, we took it for all cash, we got almost a million C-bills. But yeah, that worked out pretty nicely for us. I mean, I suppose if we wanted to try and pick apart the Wasp, we c probably could have gotten some interesting equipment, because it had listen kill SRMs. And a Rapier is always a great pickup, I mean, we've got one. I mean, we need to fix it, but we have it. But other than that, the the wasp or the, the other stinger was useless, and the locust was useless, and oxide is interesting, but oxide doesn't have the greatest equipment that we would ever want. Although maybe my perception is a bit skewed because we've been playing the rumblers all week, and the rumblers are oh, they are surging ahead. Alright, war activities, some stuff happened. Ghost Bear is not having a good time. Three days and four thousand sea bills is not terrible at all. That will take us to the end of the month. Uh, unless we wanted to turn around an immediate one mech assault on something, and I don't. So, quickly manage tasks. We're go okay, that's perfect. So, one. Hey, half a million C-bills taken away. We're going to set to normal as usual. Hopefully the game doesn't break it on us, because otherwise things will get a little bit ugly. Hatchet Man's done. Trebuchet and Arbiter is done. How long until the pilots are done? Ooh, almost a week. Do I have enough pilots to actually field another group, or am I actually going to have enough money to hire pilots? Yeah, I need to hire one person. Huh. So let's go ahead and do that. So to the hiring hall. We're going to pick up a brand new pilot, because apparently we have enough speed to keep the op tempo going for a bit. Uh, we could pick up Arclight, who is, you know, percent sign, Arclight percent sign is the default pilot that shows up. Uh, she is 31,000 per month. And you're a Kickstarter backer or running? You're running. Hey, Paladin's back. We're not picking him up. Yes, uh, we got Popo, and then Sweep would also be useful. Uh, commoner, enlisted in military, minor increase. How about you? What have you got? Minor increase, moderate increase, criminal, and reckless. Bonus to hit in combat, but also to be hit, which could be a little bit ugly to work with. Uh, Popo here is reckless, not great. Military, so minor increase. Discount to buying things, and moderate increase. Ooh, you are an interesting choice. I might take you. you. Uh, Rhea is just a Curitan commoner, and you got a minor increase. Ready for order. I think we just want to grab Popo here. I am reading that right, right? It's not PDPD, PD, right? So, from the Draconis Combine, which, you know, we're kind of heading in that direction anyway, aren't we? And... Yeah, we're going to pick him up. We may not need him, but we're going to go for it. Available. So, over to the barracks. Let's uh, skill up our brand new pilot real quick. 
So Eck, you need stuff. Let's just put Eck on the broad. He's got everything. There. He's a four across the board. Not particularly useful, but not useless either. Uh, you can be... What do we need? Succubus is gunner. We've got a puncher, and Eck could be anything. Well, he looks like he's kind of intelligent. Let's give him the tactics bonus on this one, and then we'll give him a bit of gunnery. Lock it down like that. Uh, specs him up to being in a specific way, but we'll go with that. Succubus is kind of our second in command at this point, for the B Lance anyway. Okay, everybody's skilled up. So let's go figure out a nice, easy, low level contract for us to take for the B team, just so they can get a little bit of experience and some cash out of it. So 637,000 for a destroy base and a destroy base. Half a scalp, plus three reputation as well. Um. Yeah, let's take Deniable Destruction, I think. Because it's a low-level cash. Or we'll take it for salvage, because it's a 3 of 13. We can make 237,000 off of that, no problem at all. And in fact, what we could probably do is if we took it as this, we would get a buff to uh, to the Lyrans and get ourselves liked. Although, we're probably not going to end up working for the Lyrans at the end of this. So, not going to bother too much with that one. Pull off our exhausted mech warriors, because they need some time to reset and rearm. Eck, you can go into... Oof. Um, the crab. Succubus will go in the trebuchet. Sumo will get in the hatchet man, which leaves Popo in the arbiter, which is decent because, you know, that'll give him a high tactics. He's kind of lower on piloting than I'd rather like him to be because part of keeping a light mech like this alive is being a decent pilot. But high tactics, high tactics and good gunnery might be able to keep him alive long enough. So we'll take this mission, then we need to quickly run through our how much uh, equipment we've got, if there's anything to sell, internal combustion engines, fusion cells, that kind of thing. And then we'll probably set tracks for a different planet. I'm not quite sure where we want to go, but we do want to go somewhere. Probably by the end of the month is when we're going to leave, I think. So we'll get in a couple of more missions at this month, and then we'll start heading out towards different space. Although where we want to go is going to be up to you guys, so start thinking about that now. How many people here watch the top eight battleships? Yes, for those of you who don't know, uh, the main theme of my channel is Starfleet Command, and uh, we recently put out a Top 8 Battleships video, which uh, ranked the Top 8 Battleships from each nation. So there's eight nations, each one got one battleship, we got to compete against each other for single-player combat. Uh, I highly suggest you check it out, I thought it was pretty cool. So let's drop down on the planet and have a good time, although once again it's night time. Can we get a day out, please? Already, oh it's this map. <laughs> To destroy base on this map, that's even worse. So there's going to be turrets, no no doubt of that one. So let's run forward. Even if he's not a very good pilot, he can go incredibly quickly and his good tactics will hopefully be able to spot out the enemy in a decent way. Eck, you return to us from the last campaign and we're going to keep you in the scrap for a little while because you're an okay pilot but you're not a great pilot and that'll work out fine. Succubus herself. Following up in the trebuchet. High, high gunnery ought to be able to work quite nicely with her. And the LRMs, if we can get a lot of decent shots on it. Maybe should have put her in the crab and put Eck in the trebuchet, because it would be a little bit more forgiving of his slightly lower gunnery. But it'll be fine. It's a half skull mission. Hopefully it's not too difficult. Standing by. Okay, I'd like to get somewhere with cover. Unfortunately, this map doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of it. Double time. Look oh, hi. Um, okay. Wasn't quite expecting you right there, but hey, we're going to work with it. Uh, blow this thing apart so we don't have to deal with the dirt, because I think you can do it. Somehow, you managed to miss the haywire. That's impressive, but okay, we're going to work with it. And so the enemy now gets to move, hopefully not too fast. we got a Flea 4, a Wasp right there. Uh, no other turrets at the moment. And a Commando. Lovely. Of course it's a Commando. Oh, no, please tell me you're not. He's a 3 a uh, um, you shouldn't punch all that powerfully. Oh, 22 damage. Is that right to the CT? That was right in the... Oh, no, not to the CT. Into his torso. Okay, we're okay with that. Uh, I need to get you somewhat closer to the enemy. And as soon as you may. But since you're not going to be able to move in close enough to actually hurt them anyway, uh, we may as well move everybody else first. 9.2 is not particularly good. How about the rest of the group? 25, 63. That's not bad at all. What if I got just a little bit closer? Yeah, that's obstructed at that point. Okay, so we'll leave him out in the open here. 
Moving forward just a little bit. 63% is not terrible at all. Not a good shot. Decent shot. Well, we can't see him with the lasers. So we're actually going to focus on the Waspier and lay into him with all of the misses. This with both of the lasers. And hopefully we will blow him apart. Not quite, but that was kind of to be expected from completely honest. As much as I would like to annihilate him in one salvo, that was never going to happen. Okay, we're going to sprint to get right close and personal with him. 44%, so one of the few cases where running actually increases your chance to hit on this one. So we're going to get relatively close to him and hopefully can blitz him down with our medium pulse lasers. So, yeah, he's pretty open. We just need a couple of good hits. 57%. Come on, go for his head. Well, actually, go for his legs. If you can tear off his legs or just make him scared enough to... His That's perfect. All right, so he'll be on the ground. We'll be able to follow up quite nicely. On your back, please. We're going to preserve some of your stuff. So he's a mini, mini Vindicator right now, but in the near future, hopefully the near future, when we upgrade to version 0.999, we will have actual models for him. Ooh, I kind of figured, but I didn't want to believe it. He is actually the large laser version of the flea, which makes him quite dangerous. Yes, Ek, um, what's your shot over here? Quite nice. That's a shout out here. Not quite as nice. So we'll follow up with somebody else. So both of our medium mechs sort of providing a more long range fire support role. Um, if I do this, I will utterly annihilate him. Medium laser just off to keep the temperature down because I think he's going to be dead anyway. Yeah, I kind of figured that'd be the case. Losing a wasp is not the worst thing in the world, although we'd like to preserve parts of this fleet. And we got a spider, a 5k. I don't remember if that's the ballistic version or the twin medium laser and the torso version. But in any case, he's not going to be able to participate too much in this battle. He might lob a little bit of fire. So he is the machine gun version. He's got a single medium laser and two machine guns, one on each arm, that can blaze away. Hopefully he blew up his machine guns doing that. And Sumo, let's go deal with the flea. Because he is too gosh darn dangerous to keep alive. Uh, we're not quite going to put our back towards the spider. We're going to come in from a side for a 94. Oh, and that there was just nothing left of him at that point. He's gone. So Popo then should be able to come around and basically blitz the crap out of this guy. So I don't think the commander is going to survive this. Hi, I'm going to cook to kill you, and I think I'm going to kill you. Unless, of course, he decides he's going to put most of his firepower into this. I take it back. Wow, just enough. So clearly, clearly Popo very finely tunes how much damage he's going to do someone to actually annihilate them. Uh, Succubus, you can get a shot in. Can you get slightly closer? That's the slightly closer I needed. Put him just inside the inner ring range band on the missiles. So for once, we are primarily using our standard long range missiles instead of the dead fires. Oh, and just... Wow. That was impressive. Okay, so we completely wiped out that unit, which is a little bit sad because we kind of need to save some of those parts. But at the end of the day, we can just grab their broken corpses, and that should work out okay. We're not seeing it. Oh, we do see another turret off in the distance. So do I want to actually poke? I don't really want to poke it too hard because that might be a little bit dangerous. Uh, Ek, do you actually have a shot on that turret? Because if you can provide a little bit of long-range fire support, that would be super helpful. And can't tell, but we'll find out. So we'll rush on forward, give ourselves a decent-ish shot. 40% is not terrible. We managed to hit it with one. Lovely. So that'll make it incredibly vulnerable to follow-up fire, and I think Popo will actually be able to do it. Uh, it's going to be sort of on a long-range scale here. Oh, I can get into a mineral field. Lovely. Okay, so we'll set ourselves up there. And that'll keep us nice and protected. Could shoot that, but we're not going to. We're going to blitz at that. Just need a little bit more I just needed one. I just needed one. That did not work out well. So hopefully, hopefully, Succubus gets there first. Uh, it's not. It's going to be Sumo. Uh, unfortunately, Sumo can't actually axe any of these buildings, which is a little bit concerning. Because, you know, you'd think he'd be able to just run up there and hack at them, but he cannot. So we're going to shoot down at the large reinforced building with his medium pulse lasers, of which he only has a 70% chance of actually hitting. That's a little sad. It's not that heavy damage. He's only managed to hit it a couple of times. So still above about half health. Succubus, can you get in here and provide a little bit of love? I think she can. We should be within uh, LRM 15 range. And we only need a couple of hits. Lob some fire. Ooh, maybe I should have gotten closer because 11% is not particularly great. 
five is not gonna do it. Oh, but luckily he was not actually in range. Uh, you have a haywire launcher, which, you know, we don't exactly want to risk too much on. So the idea is going to be to shut off most of your weapon systems. Not you, but you. Uh, that'll do. There we go. Tore it apart. So there. We have finished wiping out the enemy defenses, as it would seem. And now we can start focusing on shocking down these buildings. Uh, the hatchet man, again, just gonna sit here, blaze away. He can't really do much else. He can't axe a building. But hey, he might be able to do something fun with it. Break it. There we go. All by himself. Good shot, Commander. But the first of four buildings has gone down. Now we just need to find the rest. Um, uh, why do I not see other buildings? That's a very interesting problem. Okay, we're just gonna have to run around the outside of the edge. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but hey, we'll get it done. Oh, whoops, he actually did have a target, he just wasn't showing me target lines to it. So he'll be able to shoot next turn. Uh, keep our line of sight. Yeah, just target the building. 92, let's see if she can do 100 damage in a round. She should be able to. Unless, of course, she gets a little bit unlucky. But I don't think she is, and wiped out another building. So that's two of the four buildings down. Gonna work on finding the rest. And it's the top of the turn. Popo is once again under heat, so that will allow him to basically dive on top of any building he desires. Except to sprint, so we can really get some motion going on here. And that's the turret we annihilated. Uh, we did pick up another turret out here. Whole bunch of SRM-6s, so let's turn on all the weapons. And blast at it to see if we can't kill it before it tries to kill us. And I think we came just short of wiping it out. That is unfortunate. Succubus is just going to stand here, I think. Target the next building in the line. And break that as well. Because she can. Absolutely lovely. She's a one-woman re wrecking crew. I'm very happy about it. Okay, Ek is going to get up here. Oh, there's another turret. Jeez. How many turrets are left? Uh, yeah, you're going to shoot this just to try and wipe it out so it can't shoot at us. So that's, what, the third turret? So that'll be fourth turret there, which does make sense. Most of these ma uh, maps do have four turrets on them. So nothing too out of the ordinary. Uh, we do, of course, need to remember that Sumo is eventually going to light himself on fire if he keeps this up. So we probably shouldn't rush him too much too often. Because he does not have great heat dissipation thanks to his stealth armor. He really is designed to walk up to somebody and try and, well, annihilate them from close range rather than having to risk any actual heat problems. So I gotta shut them all off. We'll shut the narc off. May as well save the round. Doesn't actually save us anything, but we may as well. And... Wait, Sumo's up again? What? Didn't realize we came back to the beginning of the round. Walk over here. Target a building. Yeah, they're both at 100 health. Blast away. Takes him about two turns to wipe out a building, but that's fine. Gonna take him a little bit longer than that if he takes him this many shots. And his heat is getting critical again. Eck can do a little bit of follow-up fire. We could go immediately try and wipe out the the, uh, the building itself, but I think I'd rather try and wipe out the turret real quick. Because if I pull that off... Uh, that might have done it. I did it. Okay, lovely. If I pull that off, I may not ha actually have to run to get off the map at the end of the mission. Uh, can Succubus get a direct line of sight anywhere she goes? Not quite. So we'll just set her up. She'll do a little bit of indirect fire. And then next turn, she'll actually be able to see what she's shooting at. No, but that one doesn't need that much damage, although I doubt we're going to actually be able to kill it. And never mind. Good job. All right, so we've wiped out the four bases, it would appear. And we've eliminated everybody. Perfect. So we didn't take any real damage, aside from the Arbiter, which got punched around a little bit. But other than that, it's doing pretty decent. So, yeah, pretty successful mission. I don't know quite what we're going to get out of that, because we did manage to just annihilate all the mechs that were standing guard. But, let's see. The whole bunch of spider parts, because we managed to break out his engine. We did get a large laser. How many of those we got? None, so we may as well grab it. Uh, SRM-6, a whole ton of hands. Heat sinks. Any kind of fun engines? No, jump jets, lower arm actuators. Do I got any of those? I do not. Probably not going to keep it. I mean, I'm probably going to grab some other weapons, but it is something to keep in mind. 
SRM6, I have three. Don't need any more of those. Small lasers, I've already got two of those. Machine guns, I've got two of those. Medium lasers, we have 12. So doing fairly decently on the medium laser front. Pull off that. We will grab... Yeah, the parts to the 30-ton spider. It's a more useful pick of our cash because we can sell it if we uh, if we need to, which we probably will. How many hands I got? Yeah, I've got six hands, so I don't need any of those. Yeah, lock that down. Uh, we picked up pretty much all the spider parts out of that one, one of the wasps and one of the fleet parts as well. Another medium laser, machine gun, small laser, a couple of heat sinks, and we did get the SRM launcher along with SRM ammo, so pretty decent on that one. It's not the most brilliant pickup, but it's a half skull mission, what do you expect? <laughs> So if worse comes to worse, we can sell some of that stuff in order to earn back the 200-something thousand that we would have earned had we taken that one for cash. The A-team should be ready to go soon, and there's a couple of higher-level missions that I'm thinking we may want to take, although they're not great pilots just yet. So perhaps not exactly something that we want to risk too hard. But that'll really depend on how things end up shaking out. Because... Also, every single week there is a percent chance of new missions being generated, so something interesting may come along. Uh, I would hopefully prefer to do missions against pirates just because they're easier to do, but that limits you to mostly pirate tech. So two days in order to patch up the Arbiter, which is not too bad, because even in two days we're not going to have the A-team ready to go, so there is actually going to be a little bit of a chill period. One, uh, we'll kill Rance where he stands. No lasting consequences. He's gone. Never to be seen again. Let that be a lesson to you all. Do not betray the commander. Uh, two more days on that. We're sitting at 1.3 million. Quick check on the ship upgrades to see if there's anything we actually care about. There's several things. We could get the improved lounge at that. Another two morale, but it's 450,000 for only plus one tech point. Whereas we could take the other harnesses and get one tech point for much less. Or one tech point for much less. If you combined these two, you would pay less than you did for the improved lounge. Kind of want to, yeah, we'll get the training module going. It's only 90,000. It's super cheap and nice to have because it starts getting all your B team pilots trained up a little bit. So, Apex and the rest of the A team is ready to go. Okay, lovely. Uh, barracks need to do a quick check on the A team, see if anybody actually managed to level up on that one. Uh, no, and yes. Okay, she's a tactics already, and normally I try and pair up tactics with punching. But it may be a good idea to pair up tactics and piloting or multi attack. Tactics plus multi-attack allows you to have much more control on a base assault mission, so that's one of the things that I'm thinking about maybe there. Uh, Punisher is fully locked up. Yeah, so it's just Apex who we're trying to figure out what we want to do with her. Because I've already got a Tactics Puncher, and I don't want, don't intend to turn her into anything crazy. But this would give her the ability to shoot and then move. I don't really see that being as super useful on her, given what she's currently driving. Uh, Guts, also a similar problem because she's driving lighter mechs. The Juggernaut ability is not super useful. does give her plus one initiative, which is nice, but I think I'll just save that for now. Gunnery really is where I'm leaning towards. Because, you know, you can set yourself up early and then just lob fire at everybody. Hmm. No, I'll go Ace Pilot. Because there might be a circumstance where she finds herself in where she wants to shoot and then run. And maybe she can run and shut herself down somewhere else. Because her mech is rather toasty. Alright, so we're ready with the A-team. Let's see what sort of missions we can grab for them. Uh, insurrection protection, lost supplies, heck no. An assassinate of the general, which, uh, that's certainly a thought. Wolves is 37 days away, this is 41 days away, this is 45 days away. None of which I'm particularly interested in. Question is, do we go after a general? But the general is really well defended. He's got like three lances on his back. Clean out the mercs. Oof. Misses with the Lyrans a bit. Yeah, we're going to clear out the mercs. One and a half skull mission. Pull out the B team. And put in the A team. Get back, get back in your little arbiter. Black sheep to her crab. Punisher gets his trebuchet. And flatline back to the hatchman. Rock and roll time. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go for a straight-up battle on this one to clear out the Mercs mission. Lyrans aren't going to like us too much, but we are kind of moving away from Lyran space. We're going to probably start heading southeast out of Galatia and hopefully get ourselves in sort of combine territory is what I'm currently thinking of. Well, combine or the uh, Orlau. I could work for Karita or Lau, really. I want to head towards it out because they've got the most champions, and I'd like to get my hands on a champion battle mech since it's one of my favorite mechs. 
and I haven't actually run into one in, well, ever. I know it's in-game, we've seen that. It was included in the game quite some time ago, but I haven't actually been able to actually get my hands on it. So we can go hunting off in that direction. That's my current plan. Or we could, you know, head out to the deep periphery, start looking at the really weird pirate mechs. The Corsair has recently been ported over from Mechware Online into the game, so that'll be a part of the next update as well. Alrighty, let's go fight some mercenaries. And it is daytime, so that'll help out. Oh, and it's this mission. Well, this map. So, coming up here is a bit of a trap. You can't get down if you go in that direction. Going out here is an interesting battle, but there will be reinforcements over here. So, what we learned from last time is you swing out over in this direction, you engage these forces, and then you turn around and crush these guys. So, that's what we're going to do. Way off on the side, fight the reinforcements first, and bother with everybody else later. That way we don't have to worry about getting ourselves killed too badly because we got outflanked by incoming reinforcements. I've got your back. Push, you're gonna follow up. This trebuchet is remarkably quick for a 50-ton mech. Ride. But things are quite nice with him. He's also super heavily armored. We made sure that one of the most important things we gave him was all of his armor upgrades. So he will hopefully be able to actually stand in the line, which helps and syncs quite nicely with his dead fire ammo. Had we kept him with being... Uh, had we... Uh, kept him at his standard armor complement, then the dead fire kind of, kind of works against you because it's designed to come in close range. And if you don't bring the armor to that fight, then you're going to have some problems. Okay, able to run out and break out of the canyon, which will mean that nobody else can get caught behind her in her mini wolverine. Uh, I wonder what the arbiter is actually going to look like. That'll be interesting. Uh, Flatline is currently caught behind the Punisher, so we got to reserve him. Which, and we got... Oh, no, Punisher is up. But he was able to use his Master Tactician aye, aye. ability. So we're all going to continue down this little canyon here. Nice and hidden. They will never know what's going to hit them. For uh, Black Sheep, can you actually get in front of him? No, she can't. So Flatline, uh, we're kind of stuck in this little conga line here. All right. But that's alright. Once we break out here, we will actually be able to get involved with other things. And if there isn't anybody who spawns in that corner, and I don't I believe there won't be, uh, but if there isn't, we will be able to come at the enemy from the side, which will be quite nice. Okay, and Apex is up once Dead again, line. and Punisher is going to be way down at the bottom, so I'm actually going to preserve, because i got to reserve all the way down to Punisher, and I sh may as well get him on the move. Black Sheep, and Punisher. Lovely. Okay, so we can get him out of the way. So we'll rush him sort of out into the open. Roger that. Nobody on scope, but I anticipate there could be very shortly. And Flatline will then be able to move out, which will then let the Black Sheep herself get out, and we'll all be out of that little hole. Out into open country, where we can really start getting engaged. Awaiting orders. Apex on the wide flank to see if we can't locate the enemy off here in the corner. And was Darius thinking about it? Darius was thinking about it, but he didn't actually tell us that there was anybody coming. What can I do for you? And the last of our pilots. Lovely. So we're now out in open country. We now can maneuver around a little bit. Aye, aye. Apex move off in this direction to see if she can't find some enemies. And doesn't look like there's going to be reinforcements on this one. At least at the moment. That could change very quickly. Yeah, nothing as of yet. So we're actually maneuvering ourselves into a pretty decent position to come at the other guys from behind. But I was very much anticipating reinforcements coming and watching through here. I'm not going to complain that they didn't show up. It just seems odd to me. Do I trust anything Darius says? Absolutely not, but hey, once he says something, it lets us know what's going on. Hey, it's a Clint! It's always a bloody Clint. Why is it always a Clint? I have no idea. I didn't think Clints were that popular in Steiner space, but apparently they are, because they are just absolutely everywhere. Okay, running on forward, set herself up. We're out in the open, which should allow us to attract a little bit of fire, and we will be able to start lobbing some fire with our indirect LRMs. 9.2, may as well take it. There's no penalty. I mean, we don't carry a ton of ammunition, so there is that penalty, but... Maybe it'll get them to suddenly sprint off and come towards us, where we can bottle them up and wipe them out. All of them. So Clint should be in a, that Clint should be in a fairly decent position to shoot down on us. I think I'm gonna just sprint the Arbiter up towards him and jump on top of him. Standing by. Uh, Black Sheep, can you see him? Oh, you can. He gave you a side shot at that, so... Uh, turn the medium lasers off. Just lob with the largest. 
miss and a miss. It was only a 30% 30, 30 chance, but I figured I had to take it. So we've shot for the additional accuracy, and then we get to use our piloting skill to move into cover, where we're not going to be as easy a thing to hit. Apex will then follow up, and she's going to sprint over in this direction. I could... I don't know if this guy is a decently powerful Clint or completely weak, so I'm just going to run and not quite be in his vision. So he's going to have to move if he wants to get me, because I assume he's an ace pilot, since most of the enemies are ace pilots, it seems. So he is going to move. Yep, taking a shot down at us. Ooh, he's got an... Is that an ultra auto cannon or two? He's either got a UAC 2 or two AC-2s. To okay, Punisher's not going to be able... To, or no, Punisher is going to be able to do an absolute world of hurt to him. Uh, walk right here. What are we dealing with here? 25% we're going to do it. The reason why I stopped here is it gives me an obstructed line of sight. It's a 43% chance to hit. Managed to nail him with one of our lasers as well. So hopefully we can make him regret his choice to reveal himself. And keep up the fire. will come from the black sheep as well. Okay, we got some long range missiles raining down on us. It's quite a few long range missiles too. Sounds like they've got their own trebuchet. So bombing the crab, but not able to do too much damage as of yet. Flatline can start moving in that direction to get involved. And I'm not really interested in having him try and engage the Clint because we'll never get the range on it. Oh, you're a fire starter. That can't be right. Somebody else was shooting. I refuse to believe that a fire starter has that many LRMs on board. For all, we're not playing MWO at the moment. Yeah, more long range missiles. So we are dealing with a long range missile lance. That's very puzzling. Normally they're much more equipped for closer range combat in mind, but not in this case it would seem. Okay, Apex. Let's, uh... Let's get on top of him. Could jump for it. 66 may as well. Have a little bit of a hop. And we've got a... Ooh, it's a light missile carrier. Interesting. So how far is this campaign? Uh, Several months in at this point. We're doing pretty decently. Uh, we've only got five mechs at the moment, but we spent the first two months or so just sitting, repairing everything. And then we've been doing active missions for another couple of months. Okay, we don't have the range of the fire starter just yet, so I'm not going to bother trying to jump on him yet. I'll wait for it. Get another round of shooting down to the Clint. Hopefully make him a little bit unsteady. Got a little bit more penetrating hits going on in here. A double heat sink destroyed, so he's a fairly advanced version of it. That should make him unsteady. It did. Lovely. Okay, so now we get on the move. So we'll start moving over towards here. So this has to be killed relatively soon. Flatline's going to reserve, and you want them to come to me so the flatline can actually punch somebody and hit them with his big old hatchet. Oh, good, you're coming to me. That'll make my life a lot easier. So hopefully he'll miss. He did not. So that'll do a little bit of damage to his arm, but other than that, we're okay. Oh! Forgot about that. Okay. So he's got uh, two plasma lances, but that's not too big of a deal at the moment. Can't see you directly. What's the t chance of hitting you? Not you. You. 69 is okay, but what if I moved? What if I moved and got a direct line of sight on you? One tile back. 74. Yeah, gotta take that. Back up just a little bit. Turn on all the guns and blast away. Wow. We met. Okay. I thought for a second she managed to miss both of them. Not the case. Stability check failed. Lovely. Okay, that's gonna do wonders for his accuracy. And he's down to a three of four. Perfect. Not gonna be able to follow up like I'd want to. But we're doing okay so far. More missile fire coming down to the hatchetman, but it's not too bad just yet. Once, the light, once that light missile carrier gets in range, then we're going to start having problems. Okay, we're gonna about to have start having problems. Luckily, that was still an indirect fire shot, and he's not particularly accurate at the moment. So we're good. We're not going to be quite as quick on the next round, though, so there is that working against us. Got to take that 87. He'll be on the move next turn before they get to move anyway. Oh, lovely. Okay, we took out his arm, his leg completely, so we should be able to follow up and knock out the other leg. That'll get us most of this mech, and we'll be able to steal most of his stuff. Pilot injury, three or four. So we're dealing with decent-ish mech warriors at the moment. Clint is going to stand up. Thankfully for us, he's not going to be super accurate. At least that's the hope. He could turn around and suddenly be just a god of war, but I'm playing not. Good, he managed to miss everything by 90%. Jeez, not having a great day. And right, we're just going to bounce over here and just continue the onslaught. All right, Apex, can you actually move? No, you can't. So it is going to be a jump. And we're going to get to... Do we dare? I don't think we do. 
was about to say, do we dare showing our back towards that missile carrier, but we can't possibly risk okay. that much. So we're going to hop over here. Hello. On top of you. About to cook, but that's fine. Actually, I'm going to vigilance so that we have a little bit better protection and blaze on into him. Okay, missed with most of our weapon systems, which is very unfortunate, but we did break his hand, so he no longer has to worry about that. And he's stressed, and we are cooking. Let's probably spend around punching or something. Uh, flatline. Don't want him to be attacking this guy. Do I see what his initiative is? Standing by. Uh, can't really see it because flatline is covering it. Uh, we don't know. Okay. I don't want to kill him with flatline because I want to save him. I want to get his stuff. And unfortunately, we don't have enough firepower to actually blaze through with our cannon. Or with our pulse lasers. So I'm thinking we're just going to leave him behind. And we're going to dive on top of him. Although it has been explained to me that the light missile carrier is the most powerful or most armored missile carrier variant that there is. So that's an interesting complication. I figured it was a hunter. Okay, so let's just lay into him. Hopefully we can get a little bit lucky. I doubt it though. But next turn we'll be able to punch him and he knows it. So he'll probably do something to try and get on top of us. But I believe he's got three LRM-15s, but it could be three LRM-20s. Into our back. But we're too close because you have an AC-2, and the AC-2 requires you to be, well, a little bit farther away. Black Sheep. I hear ya. Yeah, I want you to pick off the legs off of him so that I can then focus all of his fire into the back of him. Uh, go for the leg. 87s all around. Blast away. Okay, that was the CT, honey. I need you to kill the leg. A little bit of fire on the leg. I've got your back. So we do have a shot on both. I get to pick one or the other. You're a punchy one, but you're not doing anything this round. Should do his back. I don't want him to risk our arbiter a little bit too much, so I'm going to make him suffer slightly. Oh yes, gyro destroyed. So that's lovely. Hopefully he will eject on this one. It'll be down to two pilot injuries left. And then we can move off to the side a little bit. So odds are the black sheep is going to be the one who gets charged, but she should be all right. Hunter is still focusing on the hatchet man, which is reasonable. Uh, not to be super accurate, only managed to hit us with one of his missiles, but it's what the LRM carrier is going to do that really has me worried. And he managed to blow up his LRM because he hotloaded it. I do not see the advantage of hotloading. Well, there's a small accuracy buff, but it's not worth that much. Oh wow, every single one of those missed. The hatchet man is perfectly safe and alive. Firestarter is about to stand up. He's only got one leg, so he ain't exactly quick at this moment. Honestly, dude, if I were you, I would have bailed. But he's not going to... Oh, he's, is he still fast enough to sprint all the way to punch the hatchet man again? Is that what you're attempting to do? Oh no, he's going to blast away with his, with his medium laser. He's got a rear attack on us. Actually managed to plink a little bit on our armor. That's not terrible. Okay, Apex... Bye. He's on his on the ground. You should be able to kill him. Roger that. Yeah, it's a bit of a heat problem. How much is left in this leg? Ooh, probably about two, actually. This off and this off. Now we keep shooting. The haywire ammo, I don't believe, can explode? Actually, let's find out. How bad is our heat at the moment? 8.3%. Yeah, go for the leg. Tear off the leg? No, she, of course she corded it out. She missed every single one of those shots. We ordered a call shot, and she can't be arsed to try. Darling, we're trying to get something done here. We'd like you to actually be a team player on this. 82, 82, 87. Shows my back to the hunter, but the hunter blew up his own LRM, so I don't really care. So, hi. Hopefully you're not going to survive this, because that will make my life a lot easier. Lovely. So we managed to take out the LRM carrier. And we only blew up the ammo, so all those LRMs have been preserved. How can I help? Uh, you can honestly not kill this guy as efficiently as I know that you can. 50%. We are on the side that has the weakened leg. Uh, that's 7 damage apiece. Tossing 15 missiles at a half percent accuracy. So we're dealing 7 times 15, 70. A lot of damage. Shut that one off. Blast away. Aye, aye. Come on. Tell me I 
Did I do this? Oh, not quite. Black Sheep, you're up. Oh, not only are you up, but he has no evasion anymore. Okay, it might not be worth it to try. <laughs> I don't want to kill him. Uh, how about if I did an offensive push on him? What am I dealing with here? 56? Okay, lovely. Shut off the large laser. Go for that. Turn on one large laser, just in case. Blast. Got the leg. Lovely. Okay, perfect. So, we took him intact, at least. So, a 35-ton mech compared to the 45-ton mech. Or is he 40? That doesn't really matter. The hunter, you have no gun anymore, so you're basically dead. And you're just going to sit here. You get to chill out, since I don't want your haywire ammo exploding. I am attempting to avoid losing things that are important to me. Such as, you know, haywire ammo, which is hard to replace. Fire away. Miss. Hit. Miss. Okay, so we got, well, 50%. Not terrible at all. Flatline, are you going to be able to get there? Not if he runs back, you're not. So, just get a sprint on forward. You'll be able to dive onto him next turn, hopefully, if he doesn't get too far away from you. And laser beams. Multiple. Oh, he still apparently has a whole bunch of machine guns, or at least I'm hoping those machine guns, because if I've walked right on top of somebody with this many AC-2s, I'm going to have a bad day. I've got your back. Punisher doesn't have a line of sight. Punisher should be able to... Oh, there we go. Yeah, because the dead fire probably shuts off his ability to shoot at long range. Uh, 30, how about... Yeah, 30 to 37 with normal ammunition. Fire away. So it's not going to do much to him. He's basically a fully armored hunter. But trimming away the armor is helpful, and at the end of the day, ammo is free so long as you don't lose it. So we'll sprint on down. Ooh, side shot. Take the side shot. And also, we, if we can nail the haywire. Oh, it's not in range of the haywire. That's okay. I managed to burn a little bit more on him. He's not having a great day, it seems. You're fine. Don't blow up. What can I do for you? Uh, you can just continue to walk towards him and steadily wipe him out, if at all possible. Can you see him? Oh, only if I move over here, but that's fine. I doubt she's going to kill him, but hey, we're going to try. We did manage to get a large laser shot and a medium laser shot, so she's been pretty consistent on hitting half of the time. Which is not terrible at all, high. considering what she was showing up with numbers. Alright, fly line, kill him. That was the goal. It'll be a 98.5, so there is still a chance that he can lose. But I'm hoping not. Perfect. Okay, lovely. Lance has been destroyed, and we managed not to break everything. Lovely. Operation complete. So the A-team able to continue to move along and break everything that they come across. Very happy with all of them. And we went for full salvage on this one, so we should get a pretty decent amount of stuff. We got all of that fire... Well, not all of We'll get three parts of that fire starter because we blew off his legs. So 137, 990,000 Seabills was our reward. No penetrations, although the Arbiter, again, took a pretty rough couple of hits from that AC-2. You took no damage, you took no damage, you took very little damage, so we should be ready to go in just a couple of days again. Uh, three parts of the fire starter, as we said, one part to the Clint, a couple of, so he did have a pair of AC-2s, that's kind of surprising. ER medium lasers are very nice. That's a thought to grab. Plasma torch, endo steel. How much do I got? I have one extra. So it's not super critical that we grab it, although the ultralight gyro also have one extra. Really? A lot of interesting things just sitting around, apparently, in my mech bay. Uh, heats and cooling pod, patchwork materials, no thank you. Supercharger! Oh, supercharger! Thank you. Okay, I don't need the ballistic fire control system, but I do need the heatsink pod for sure. And uh, the beagle probe, I could pick it up. I don't know who had put it on, though. Could also grab a plasma torch, but the thing about the hatchet man, who is our only melee mech at the moment, he doesn't have any support slots, which makes no sense at all and is incredibly infuriating. But we have to work with it. A 210 rated engine? I've got none. I've got none. It's tempting to grab the ultralight gyro. I mean, we've already got one, but it's always tempting to grab another. Grab the beagle. Okay, we got one of the clint parts, two of the fire starter parts. Uh, one of those ER medium lasers, so that's lovely. An alarm 15 for a little bit of backup. One of the plasma torches. So yeah, not terrible. We did roll pretty okay on the support. I mean, yeah, we grabbed a couple of machine guns and nobody really wants any of those. But we got the ER medium laser. And that's what's important. And don't know how many parts to a fire starter we've got from other versions of the fire starter. We're going to have to go check to see how that's turning out. So, but with any luck, we'll get some really nice stuff. I'm a little disappointed that reinforcements didn't end up spawning on that mission. It would have been nice to try and get all of them because we did go for full salvage. Although, at the end of the day, that supercharger and cooling pod probably would have been guaranteed pickups. I might have swapped out the cooling pod instead if we had managed to run into a double heatsink kit, but we didn't. Although, if we had managed to grab the other leg off that... 
Seriously, I'm very disappointed in you, Apex. You had an opportunity to get me a brand new Clint, and you didn't. Although, wouldn't really want a Clint, would I? So we are surrounded. No, nothing's happening in the war activity. 7,000 for the next four days. It's not quite correct, but hey, we'll let him believe what he wants to believe. So three days on the Hatchman, two days on the Arbiter. We should be good for that one. A couple of days away from having the B team ready to go. I want to do a quick check of the mech bay for just a couple of, for uh, what we've got in storage. So lights, uh, we're currently sitting on nothing. Okay, so we got the one javelin that we started with, but we put in storage. Clint, we've got one part, we've got two parts to a Clint. Okay, so go for the, ooh, we've got almost all the parts for a Clint. Interesting, so one more Clint part and we've got it. So that's another irritating reason why that dropped down because that'll be a 40 ton mech for us. And we've got two hunchback parts. Nothing in the heavy, nothing in the assault, as of course. Just got to do a quick check of our equipment. Do we have any, like, really irritatingly stupid things? No. Okay. Lovely. Uh, Hatchetman is in repairs for the next three days, and he's the one I need to check out to see if I can cram on a brand new supercharger to make him a little bit faster. So, Hatchetman, where be you? We're going to bring you out. If you don't already have one, you might... Uh, he does not. He does have a random AMS that we put on there because we didn't have anything else to put on. And he's also slightly under tonnage. Oh yeah, I remember that. So, absolutely, we're throwing a supercharger on it. Supercharger to left torso component. Oh, must be in the CT. So, we need 0.81 tons left, which we can shave in order to get. Ultralight gyro, unfortunately, has the reduced stability threshold, so I don't quite want to use that. And I don't believe, yeah, I have no patchwork materials. I could throw on the endosteel. But that gives me way more weight than I know what to do with at this point. Because we took off a shoulder cannon. Uh, I kind of want to keep the AMS because that proved to be very useful. This is the old style AMS. We haven't updated to the version that has the newer version of the AMS. And so this just provides us a flat reduction in damage from the AMS, which is pretty fun. So the one defense allows us to be hit less often, which was very useful against that, L that LRM carrier. It's what, a ton and a half, right? Yeah. It's a lot of weight. Ton and a half. Plus that. I'm just mentally trying to figure out whether or not it would be worth it if, to pull off that in order to get myself another cannon. Because I believe we used to have an ultra auto cannon on this thing. So we're going to trim just a little bit. I don't want to pull anything off the hatchet. Maybe half a ton. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to do that for several reasons. Got no jump jets I can rip out. Does have a Guardian ECM, but I'm not pulling that out for nothing. You know what? Yeah, we'll pull that out. Max out the tonnage. Gives me 0.69 tons left, which I don't have anything else to put on this thing at the moment. But I'd rather have the supercharger because that'll allow me to go much faster. I could try and shed some tonnage in order to put like a heat sink or something in on board because we're almost away from one ton. But I'm not going to bother with that. So out comes the heatsink, on goes the supercharger. Hi, Hugh. Do I give you, or at least do I try and cram in? No, you're already pretty much fully maxed out, plus you've got a heat exchanger anyway. I'm trying to figure out whether or not it would be useful to put the cooling pot on this mech, but I don't think so. I think we would be better served if we put it on the crab, because the crab does heat up a little bit. And we kind of want to keep that under control. Can I pull anything off of this? Uh... Not if you have a jump yet. How much is that uh, pod going to cost? It's a ton, right? It is a ton. Oh. It's in cooling pod. Yeah. So I've got one jump jet, which is half a ton. And we've already got a spiked helmet on here because that's useful. We've already got our, en well, we've got endo composite, but we could go up to full endo steel. That actually gives us another ton worth of material, which I would love to throw a double heatsink on, but I can't because I don't have any more. So you know what? We can keep the jump jet. Add on another jump jet. Lovely. So we filled up the engine, so now we have more crit opportunities that won't necessarily blow up anything important. And we'll put a cooling pot on there. That'll take us three days. And bye-bye uh, endo composite. Well, we'll put it on something else eventually, potentially. So we'll have to keep our eye out for more endo steel. Because it's a very useful piece of equipment. So we're three days away from another mission, which will put up the A-team back up for assignment again. Excellent. 
So quick check of the barracks, make sure the A-team is fully kitted out in terms of experience. I think they will be, but you've always got to check to make sure. Oh, like now. Uh, piloting. Absolutely. The increase in accuracy plus the negative stability damage taken. If he trips over his own two feet, then he's got a major problem that we'd like to avoid. So we're at 1.3 million. We pay 500,000 to pop. So we want to do a couple of things. Not sure I want to do an escort. Escaping spy. Ooh. That'll pay out a million sea bills. Plus supplies. Heck no. The general is also dangerous. You're 978, but you only give me two of nine. I might take the general just as a pure assassination for cash on that one. And then we take escaping spy as monies. Also because it's against pirates, which makes it just a little bit easier against what we're doing. Hang on a second. Just got to double check to make sure I did it right. Yep. Okay, so let's send the 18... You're under ton, right? Uh, yeah, you're just under tonnage. That's why you're whining. Yep, unused tonnage. We've got nearly a full ton worth of nothing put on this thing, which we will eventually find something to put on it. Just right now, we don't. May end up start if once we find a couple of pirate medium or ER pirate medium lasers, those actually increase the amount of melee damage you do. We grab two more of those, and then we might have enough weight to increase the engine size just a little bit more. And the bigger engine that we can put on that thing, the faster it'll go, the faster it'll go, the more opportunities we have to get in melee range, and all happiness will be found. Because once you get that thing into melee range, you start to have a lot of fun. The other fun thing to remember is that uh, the supercharger does not conflict with TSM. Which means we should be able to stack as much of it as we can on there, assuming we can find it. Because TSM doesn't exactly grow on trees, unfortunately. I wish I had just tons and tons of it. But I think throughout all four campaigns of this that we've done before, I think of the amount of TSM I've found should probably be counted on one hand. We don't often run into heavy things like Strix or other of the major melee mechs, which is a bit of a surprise because I see it in so many other people's campaigns. Alright, so let's drop down and go kill a spy. Odds are, and I'm going to place my bet now, that the spy is probably riding inside of a fire starter just because they often do. Unfortunately, it's a night battle. That's not fun. And we're back to this mission again. So we've got our random patch over here. The enemy will spawn up here. The spy is spawned down here. Basically run up here, blitz these guys, walk over here, kill these guys up here, then just rain down death from above and evac out there. Nice and easy. Aye, aye. Well, that's the goal anyway. Rush out forward into cover as we like to do and say hi to whoever's out there. Nobody's on scanners right now. What we're going to do is we'll then move up over here and we'll be fine because nobody can see nobody on the first turn. And you, on the other hand, is just going to rush right on into front and center because you're going to get yourself involved with the mechs that are here, here, and here as they generally spawn. Black Sheep, also going to follow up. I'd like to get a supercharger on her too, just to increase the amount of speed she has. Or better, Mask, since she's not going to be a melee mech. But Mask weighs a lot more. I'm not sure that I would have the free tonnage to do it. I mean, I've got a ton free, which, you know, would be enough for a supercharger. And you're done there, so all of our mechs have moved up. We're in a de pretty decent fire control position. Sprint off to the side to get some cover going on here. And look in that direction. Haha! -ha! You all were exactly where I thought you'd be. Do I see you? Oh, uh, please tell- Ugh, I did not place myself quite right to see everybody. That is unfortunate. Hopefully they'll come forward. Wasp, Locust, Clint, and Hunchback. Hunchback is what we want because we've already got two parts, so if we can take off his legs, we can steal it entirely. Okay, so the Clint is equipped with a PPC. That's going to be interesting to work with. Comes up to us. Flatline's up. Flatline's not going to go right now because Flatline's going to wait for the next opportunity to actually hit somebody he can see. So we're going to have to move, hopefully, Black Sheep and Punisher up in a range to actually hit people. And you didn't move nearly as far forward as I thought you were going to. The Locust did, on the other hand. I should be able to move Black Sheep or Punisher into a position to actually see him. Yeah, she's going to move up top. That'll give her a nice rain down position. We're going to move the Punisher in nice and close on people. Uh, plink at him. Go for a headshot, go for a headshot. Really? A 63 and you managed to miss four times? Granted, two of those were 37s, but still. Was expecting one large laser hit at the very least. Pop over here, whack him in the back. Well, not quite in the back, but in the side. For his Locust, that's close enough. If you know we can hit him. Oh, wait. No, you're the trebuchet. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. That's fine. It places him in a great position for a follow-up round. Oh, great. Okay. Um, well, in that case, I guess we're going to be gunning people a little bit with the trebuchet. Lovely. Hi. Uh, I'm here to shoot you with medium pulse lasers. 
because you didn't move very fast, and if I beat you on the next run, I will be able to axe you. So we're going to see what's interesting is about to happen. Every so often you have to make a mistake in order to make the game more interesting. Okay, so we got a sway back coming in. Oh, managed to hit us for 42 damage. See, the thing about a hunchback is he's equipped with battle fists. And that's an actual piece of equipment in tabletop. And that, they hurt. They're not fun. Uh, but that gives him an advantage in melee. So I want to sprint to get around behind you. Uh, that does appear to be a back shot. We're going to turn around. And I'm going to present my back towards the spy, but I think that'll be fine for now. Hello, little singer. Oh, ho, ho, too good. And he is a Wolf's Dragoon modified version. So the Wasp 1W, he's been equipped with a whole bunch of smalls. Die, please. Uh, not quite, but we did manage to haywire him. So he's about to have a bad day in general. We've torn out most of his back armor, which is lovely. Oh, we almost killed him in so many places. One good tagger would have done it. You've got your PPC, which is unfortunate. Oh, wait. Ooh, that's an X-Pulse, isn't it? The trebuchet getting just mauled out here. And yeah, that was quite a bit of damage there. Okay, we want to take you as intact as possible. Good idea. So we did also manage to plant a PPC shot right into the CT. That is, of course, our fault because we did, unfortunately, manage to misclick in order to do things. But ooh, I'm in a really good position to just tear him apart. We're going to move right here. That puts me in the back of two different mechs. Yes, we are ignoring him for just a moment. Set our ammunition to dead fire. 37 is not great. That's much better. And he's got no back armor because he's a hunchback. Just shoot him in the back, see what happens. Okay, I'll be honest, I wasn't quite expecting him to be completely yeah. cored out in one shot, but I'm not going to complain yeah, too hard. A little bit, absolutely, but not too much. Uh, shoot down at the complete defenseless guy. Yeah, I was expecting that. See, I told her to aim for the leg. She couldn't even hit the leg at all. It blew off every other part of that mech. We're going to back off so that we're not quite as visible to the enemy. And it is up to them at the moment. The wasp is going to come over to punch us. That's the most brilliant plan you could come up with. I mean, yeah, you did 14 damage probably to my CT, but I don't care that much. Minor damage, Commander. Yeah, Flatline, go. I don't want you to kill him, but I do want you to make him suffer. So, 74. Ooh, that, that did not go well. Okay, so despite the fact that we murdered absolutely everybody, that was not the best round we've ever had. Because we killed everybody in dramatic fashion. Okay, you're getting shot at. Oh! We do not want to be here. Are you a catapult? He might be a catapult. Because the pirate catapult is equipped with uh, thermobolt missiles. Which, as one might imagine, are pretty impressive. By the way, buddy, you just totally should have shot her because that would have done way more damage. Him, I have no problem with just obliterating because he doesn't have any lost tech. He doesn't have anything interesting. At the end of the day, he's going to be a wasp, which is not very powerful. So that mech I have no problem with utterly coring out. I didn't quite expect the hunchback to get cored out so quickly, and I definitely didn't expect him to hit the back, the CT in the back. Potentially a pirate catapult. And the only reason I say that is because the the mech that I'm most familiar with that would have a thunderbolt or a thermobolt would be the pirate catapult. We don't know they are, but we're going to try and find out. And if it is, we're going to have to find a whole ton more equipment because if it's a pirate catapult, it needs a lot of stuff to fix. Has hydro warheads in the legs too? Oh, interesting. I didn't realize that. The last pirate catapult that I ran across had thermobolts and a, had a thermobolt and a thunderbolt and no other special okay, ammunition. Help. So... Keep in mind, we are only on version 998, I want to say patch 5, hotfix 12. So we may not be at the most up-to-date version. So just keep that in mind and temper your expectations. Because we've fallen behind a little bit in version. I'm waiting until version uh, 0.999 before I go for another major upgrade. That was the Lerm 17 times 2 version? Oh, uh, well, that's not him then. Because he fired a, a uh, thunderbolt at us. Okay, what's he going to do? He's moving off to the side. Interesting. Uh, we're probably not going to be able to get him in line of sight then. So we're just going to have to keep running after him and sort of cut him off. Which we can do because we have a fairly mobile lance. Okay, she's all done. Flatline for the follow-up. And I really hope Flatline's going to be able to see him. Oh, it's a gauntlet? Really? 
I thought Gauntlet just had a million and ten lasers. I didn't realize there was a version of a, with a thermal bolt and a laser. Okay, lay into him. Let's get this show on the road. I didn't realize there was multiple versions of the Gauntlet to be found. I thought only the laser spam version was the one you'd find. Okay, let's let's get to work then. So a Thunderbolt would be very unfortunate to get hit by, but we are going a bit slow. So 37, yeah, long range missiles actually set to two long range mode. Wish I kind of had some chaff rounds just to sort of spread the love, but that's going to be the best we can do. Yep, that's the bushwhacker. So Commander? Gauntlet is a hero bushwhacker. So at least I think it is. Do I not have a lens? <laughs> ah, I just barely can't see him above jumps. I can get a jump and see him from over here at a 34. <laughs> you know what? Apex is going to reserve. Oh, it comes to Flatline. Lovely. Yep. So Flatline will then get in to the side. Now, the thing to remember about fighting Bushwhackers is they're all equipped with XL engines. So if we tear off a side torso, he's dead. We didn't. Okay, there's that going for us. And we did... Cr so it is a Thermo Bolt. And we did crit it. So I think, no, we're going to reserve her again. She's a master tactician, so she doesn't mind. Waiting on you, Commander. Uh, not sure if we're going to be able to get a line of sight with you either. Yeah, that's just not going to happen. Can I jump down? Nope. So you know what? I'm going to reserve with you as well. <laughs> Give him the opportunity to do something about it. And that's, oh, that's going to be beautiful accuracy out of the LRMs. I'm not sure what energy weapon he's got, but I'm hoping it ain't melee based. <laughs> Come on, break that. Break it. We did not break it. Unfortunate. So he's going to sprint off in a direction. Okay, it's a PPC and a thermal bolt. I gotcha. That's a pretty lethal combination. Okay, Apex, you will now be able to see him. I'm positive of it. You absolutely can. You don't have a side angle shot at him, but you could work at it in pretty short order. So we're going to come over here to prep us for the next round. Hopefully he doesn't try and escape this turn and immediately is already on his escape zone. So target, blitz him with everything. Hopefully we hit him with the, with the haywire. We did. Okay, good. And there goes his arm. He no longer has the thermobolt. Head hit, pilot injured. Okay, lovely. The black sheep herself will now get involved. And she also can see him just barely, but she can get it. So rushing on forward. So he only has a PPC left. Okay, so we're managing to deal a little bit of damage. I don't want to do too much to that side torso. Okay, where's the dropship? Okay, he's got to come through us to get out of here. Alright, so we don't want to do too much damage to this because he's got an XL engine here, which we will kill if we hit him again there. Alright, got to be a little bit closer. Yeah, for the maximum accuracy. So we're going to start working down and trimming the other side, see if we can't rob him of weapons. Which, you know, we might be able to do. So another good haywire in there. And he's unsettled, he's impaired, he's unsteady. Do I dare? Ooh. Is this a back attack? It is, I can't risk that. I don't want to risk that either because there's an equal chance that I hit the left or the right torso. And I don't, I desperately don't dare do a back attack. We've got to attempt a front one. Yeah, I know we're going to chop him in half. That's the major concern at the moment. May just be to shoot him. That will not look like this. Not like a drop in deck. I got to try. I got to give it a shot at the very least. So if I can just start keep trimming him down a bit, I might be able to get him to eject. Because the AI is not exactly... And the heavy PCC is crit... And there... Okay. There we go. Yes! <laughs> That, oh, the luck, the luck was so very wonderful. Laser him on the side and hope for the best. Yep, Daladel, I think you're like 30 seconds behind us than where we normally are, because... How can I help? But yes, that, that was what we ended up deciding to do. Oh, that's, that worked out very nicely. And also what worked out nicely is we're already in the drip zone. <laughs> already. Yes, an exceptional intimidation. Yes, indeed. Like, buddy, we don't want to kill you. Just, just come with us. 
All right, mission accomplished. Let's. Oh, please tell me the dropship didn't land on him. Because that would be terrible. Because uh, he's intact. That should be all five parts. Because we only blew off a single arm. We didn't even blow off the second arm. So we're really good with that. So I'm just going to go for all the gauntlet parts. <laughs> oh, the crab. The crab took a real pounding in that CT. Took a PVC right to the chest. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's only four parts. Gosh darn it. Oh, uh, we didn't get all five. So heavy PPC. Because it's a heavy PPC. Uh, small lasers. No, thank you. Endo seal. I need 275 rated engine. Oh. I gotta have the engine light. I mean, that's that's not even debatable. Light engines are too useful not to ever take. Do I need the heavy PPC? No. The reason I don't need a heavy PPC is because my pilots don't have high enough accuracy to use it. So I'm not gonna get a gauntlet just through grabbing parts. So that's not a huge concern. It'll be nice, but we're probably not gonna get it. Uh, the Energy Plus, the Endo. Ferro is not super useful to us. Uh, the amount of return on weight that you get is nothing compared to endo steel until you start getting a really large max. A 275 rated engine would also be nice. Well, I can't get it. So I've got uh, a double heat sink kit. So the problem is only four parts and a mask. Jeez, what the hell, game? Oh, this is what you get when you kill Gauntlet. You just get everything you could ever want. <laughs> yes, all this kit is just absurdly good. Um, so the mask... And yeah, I see the supercharger, and I think I'm going to swap it for the endo. So with the engine light, the mask, and the supercharger, that'll be what we got to do. It's worth working on just because it's fast repair Omni. Wait, what? Gauntlets and Omni? Oh. Huh. I have to compare, though, to what I'm going to get here. We're going to get some parts out of it, I assume, because... Oh, this is a rest one. But I want... I want the stuff and the mech. We're sitting on, by the way, like four gauntlet parts in our other campaign at the moment. It's, it's ridiculous. Hmm... Engine light, I can't, I can't pass that up. Light engines are too good. The mask, I want. I want to put this on the crab to make it super nimble. The supercharger, I also want. What's the likelihood that we can get a parts? We'll find out. <laughs> we got three. Beautiful. Uh, three of three of the four parts that were available. So R and Jesus has smiled on us in this mission. That, that was well done. We didn't get the double heat sink kit, but that was great. We got three of the four parts. Yeah, three out of four ain't bad. That was a great roll. I am... That's wonderful. So the game rewarded us not only with an eject roll on a mech that really wasn't that badly damaged, but also rewarded us with three out of, with three of the four parts out there for the gauntlet. Yeah, it's one of the rare IS Omni chassis. I'd keep the light engine, the super dark, take it all apart. Well, oh, oh, I, I, I feel so bad when I read things like that because it's like, well, oh, no. So three out of, although if we do this right, as long as we don't core the next gauntlet we see, which actually is not all that hard because the gauntlet is packing an inner sphere XL engine, isn't he? Wait, no, he's got the light engine. So, so we can work him down and try and get two more gauntlet parts in a future mission. And if we can do that, then we'll get the mech, which will be great. So this this was one of the best possible outcomes. Yes, the blessings of Iron Jesus. St. Ives took something from the Avian and nine days, 16,000. Well worth it. Very much well worth it. Alrighty, let's... Like, who's dented? Everybody's dented, but the Hatchet Man is dented worse. We'll put him up top. Training module in the next two days. So our mechs are out for a little while. Training module is done. Um, I think I want to save for the next upgrade. We're already at Mech Bay 2 with automation. That's all we need. Tempted to pay out the the 450 for the improved 
Because it's a morale boost, which is nice, but it's the tech point too. Maybe it's time for a move? Shortly. At the end, we're going to leave just before the end of the month. Uh, that way we'll be on the move and fixing up a new mech. And then we'll be out of Galatia. Which, by the way, you guys need to start thinking about which direction we're heading in. Structural repair is useless to us. 200,000 or 180. Cut the lounge as it is. I'll take the 180 for the refit harness. Loud space? Yeah, I'm on board with that. Apparently they have the largest collection of champions. Okay, who's left to fix? The crab, of course. Uh, so the trebuchet's done. I'm not sure what I'm doing to the trebuchet. And one day of the crab. Lovely. So we got a couple of mechs that we need to tweak a bit. And the crab is one of them. So, come here, crab. You're getting a mask if the weight works out right. Okay, he's already got an engine. So this is what I had been thinking about putting a uh, fire control energy on him. But he's already got the plus plus, so the plus would have been useless. So that's good. Very happy to see that. Uh, equipment special. A mask is going to weigh us two and a half tons. Pull that off. Pull that off. Pull that off. Still a half ton. I can do it. I mean, what I could do is I could drop down. Do I have any... I've got a bunch of small lasers. I was hoping for a small laser plus plus or an ER small or something. Uh, can I do anything else in order to make this lighter? Mm, not looking like it. That's a tad unfortunate. I mean, I'm going to do it. But it is a tad unfortunate. So we're going to send him back to his old... Ver oh, wait, no, the light engine. Is you were going to get the light engine. So the cooling pod can stay on. I have one and a half tons extra. How's my heat at the moment? Uh, 81 for 76, because the mask increases my heat, right? Yeah, plus 20% heat generation. So that's a bit much. But we can work with it as long as we keep that on there. Um, do I have any more? I have one. Ooh, no, I have several more energy slots. Could amp up his energy capabilities. Or do I have any? I don't. So I don't have any more special capability on that. How about an engine? I didn't get the bigger engine. But the light engine may just be useless to me for now. Although I really want to keep it because mask increasing the heat by that much is going to be a little bit rough. Although, I can kind of pull back on that. So I take away one of these. And then... Trim? Trim a little bit. So we'll trim for the half ton. Step back up and take one off of here and off of here. And you know what? I'm going to take a little bit more off of there so I can go back up on the armor on the back. Because I fear back shots. So we lose the jump jets, which we weren't using anyway. We lose the medium laser, which is a bit of a sad thing. Because we're now a small laser short of the regular version. But that allows us to keep the cooling pod. And... Yeah. That should work out, I think. And without using the, uh, the light engine, which we wouldn't make good enough use of the light engine to put it in here just now. So that'll be five days. And that should drastically increase the speed of the crab. Um, I have a supercharger. Big what up at sensor range? Uh, I don't view it as being a super important thing at the moment. You. I could give you the light engine, but I don't see the point. Since I don't have enough weight to put anything in this mech anyway. You've already got a supercharger. Um, we got a light engine, a supercharger, and a mask. So really, you get nothing. Oh yeah, I can't put a jump jet on you. Woo! Single jump jet. Arbiter, I think, already has the supercharger, don't you? If not, this will be ridiculous. Also, it'll be very hard to fit a supercharger onto this thing. Because it's already quite tiny. Exchanger. It doesn't have a supercharger. But it's already blisteringly fast. So I'm not really feeling the desperate need to couple one on there. Trebuchet, on the other hand, could use one. Ooh, we could probably up the trebuchet firepower quite a bit. Okay, so first things first. Light engine. Throw on the supercharger as well. For that extra little bit of speed, that gives us a ton and a half. 
which, you know, we could throw on a jump jet. We have a 240 rated engine already. We need a 250, honestly. That gives me enough to pump in another laser. Or I could start looking at ways and trying to get on a large laser. Would need to find quite a bit on that. Put on a large laser and a small laser? Medium laser. Medium laser. That brings my heat to what? 60 of 70 is not bad. Uh, you could use the light engine with a higher engine rating. Unfortunately, we don't have one. Uh, that is That was a thought we definitely had, but we're currently maxed out at an engine rating of 200. So we're not quite able to do that, unfortunately. Uh, that puts me at a half a ton short. For once, I wish I had composite materials. I'm already a little bit light on some of the tonnage. So I'm not super psyched about trimming anymore. I could go ultralight gyro. I don't like ultralight gyros for a lot of reasons. Most, most of which is because it's reduced capability. Or more ammo? Yeah. We could go with the more ammo instead of the more guns. But I really like making it more capable. Really don't like that ultralight gyro. I hate ultralight gyros. The fact that it's got 10 less stability in general and then has a 10 and then has a 20% increase in the amount of stability damage you take is just brutal. Compact gyro is heavier but smaller. Yeah, plus 40% weight on that. Engine cores, we really can't afford any. Sensor sniper? What? Increase sensor range, increase sight range. Yeah, it's too expensive for what we can do for it right now. Uh, so that's not going to be a thing. Yeah, I don't dare... I don't dare reduce the armor anymore because already it's kind of light. And in fact, I'm going to take this opportunity to increase its armor a bit. And if we happen to run ourselves into an XL gyro, we can use that. So get that forward armor just a little bit more intense. That'll give him seven days. Right. So that'll make him faster. The crab's about to get faster. Hatchetman's about to get a little bit more jumpier. So we use the light engine, the supercharger, and the mask from that kit. Arbiter is the same because the Arbiter is doing fine. So I want these two worked on first because the Hatchetman's going to be a one-day sink. We've got a week. So we're going to take a cash mission next, I think. Let's get ourselves fully situated. Lovely. Um, Wait a second. You happen to be in the back bay when Succubus approaches Yang with a question. A chief I was wondering if you had any B1100 ends in stock. I'd like to give one in salt. <laughs> Yang looks to make sure. Ah, uh, yes. So a uh, BA1100. Explain the prank. Oh, she's feeling bad about it. Come on. You shouldn't have been too bad about it. Oh, d dude. Don't do that. Okay, good. Pause. That's always scary when it goes run away on that. Alright, so let's do a quick check. Make sure the pilots are ready to go. The pilots uh, need a little bit more. Let's give her slightly more. Guts would only give me... Oh, minus five heat generation. Absolutely. With the mask on board? Definitely. Uh, we'll take her tactics last. I... Flatline needs more gunnery. And you know what? Sure, flatline will give you a little bit of gunnery. Actually, do we... Yeah, we saved it for 5,000. No, we'll give him the gunnery point. After all, someday he may not be driving that hatchet man and it may become a problem. Punisher. Punisher has heat generation, which he could use a little bit. Since we did just add on an additional laser, that's going to make him a little bit hotter. So Succubus hopefully will not have a mission for the next several days, so she won't feel too bad about things. Guts, also the heat generation... Get things under control, and that, since we did just make the entire lance just a little bit toastier. And her Arbiter has always been kind of cooking anyway. Okay, Insurrection Protection. No. Cease and Desist. Destroy Base. Eh. Humanitarians is an escort, but a lot. Mopping up is a straight battle for the planetary government against the Lyrans, which is not great. How much do the Lyrans like me at the moment? 
Uh, enough. Okay, that's fine. So we can take a mission against the Lurians without too much trouble. But I do want to take a pretty serious cash mission. Sort of prepare ourselves to get out of here. Uh, who are we fighting against in this one? Planetary government versus planetary government. So we'll attempt to assassinate the general. And hopefully he won't be a gauntlet. Because otherwise I'm going to cry. And we'll take ourselves out with our new and improved faster lance. We just keep ratcheting up the speed on this one. We're becoming a very fast cavalry lance, it seems. As soon as we can, though, we do want to give the Hatchet Man a larger fusion core. That is something I def definitely would like to do, but we got to find it first. So if we run into another gauntlet and we roll the 275, uh, the 275 rated fusion core, that would be fine. But we do need a little bit more. A little bit more out of the mech. Now, ECM and NSS or stealth armor, you feel like a ninja dodging every shot. Yes, yes you do. Especially in the last campaign, where basically every single one of our mechs had... Uh, general assassination mission of family, some irritation and pain to me. Probably. Yeah. Assassinating the general is never fun. And only for two of 17. If we can... Hopefully we can line up his support lances one at a time and kill them bit by bit. Because they're worth a lot of extra cash. But if not, we can just try and blitz down the general. Yeah, 33% per lance. So if there's two additional lances, we're going to make like 1.4 million C-bills. If... They all mob us at the same time. We might have a really bad day. So we're hoping it's not going to be too hard. So cross your fingers a bit. We did increase the firepower of the lance a little bit. But we also massively increased the speed of the lance. So there is that. Okay, so it's this map again. We can actually use this map very much to our advantage. Because it does string things out. The support lance up here. The standard lance down here. We can deal with them quickly. So Apex. Does not have a supercharger. But that's fine. So here, and then there, because we know we can make the distances. We'll go. That we won't... I saw train. something there for a second, but apparently it disappeared. So get... Of course it's an ambush, but we're going to use this to our advantage if it does become too bad of an ambush. So we got to hopefully avoid too much damage on the initial conflict. Because I am going to... Oh, okay. Alright, so Clint immediately showed up, and now we have to deal with that. So, Flatline is now going to move off in this direction. I think the Black Sheep will as well. Because it's good to have the high ground to just shoot down. Oh, crap. They've got a sensor lock on me. So, that's terrifying. Waiting for orders. Uh, I take back what I'm doing. You're going right in this direction. <laughs> yes, at least we don't have to worry about salvaging parts. There will be that. Blast away. Saladin dies first. So, we missed... And missed and missed and missed. So we did hit him once, though. So there is that working for us. Uh, we're going to see if we can't pour some fire down to the Saladin. If we get lucky, we might be able to kill him before we actually need to axe him. That would, be, of course, be ideal. But I'm not about to bet anything on that. Going full speed with the mask. And good. Where he is still very much under control. Hit. Miss. So we're almost through... Oh, we got it. Okay, great. Saladin's out of the equation. That's a mini catapult. No, it's it's not a mini catapult. It's a bloody catapult. So somebody's about to lob some missiles our way. So kind of glad that we've moved down here because the hatchet man is going to be required to dice up this catapult as fast as possible. And the catapult is coming our way. We'll not make it into the cover. And a whole bunch of missiles coming down to the Arbiter. Luckily, the Arbiter was actually able to survive that. Yes, we have a catapult. So we get a Clint up here. Uh, what? LRM-15 misfire damaged. He's also got a cannon? What the hell kind of catapult is this? Someone needs to explain this to me as soon as possible. Uh, shooting down? Yeah, we're going to shoot down. You're dangerous with a PPC, but at the end of the day, catapult's a heavy mech and you're out. So lots of fire going down here. And we're blinking away, but we're not doing a whole ton of damage, which is a bit unfortunate. And we phase. So things got a little bit more dicey than I anticipated. We still have another mech over here. Yeah, a Drillson. Okay, Drillsons are rough, but they're not terrible. So you've got, what, like two SRM-6s and four medium lasers? Oh no, you're a large laser, Drillson. That's going to be rough. They're really focused on the Arbiter. They have armor so paper thin. Yep. 
paper thin armor, but they still have an AC20 at the end of the day. Cicada, okay, not as worried about that unless you're a PPC hauling Cicada, which you might be. No, you're medium lasers, okay, good. They're very much focused on killing the Arbiter, which I'm not happy about at all. Okay, come back to me. Actually, no, we've got three more mechs over here. They've got an Arbor, too. What the hell is happening here? I have no idea what the heck that was, but we've been target acquired. And they're just... Yeah, have time to pull her back as soon as we can. But the problem is they're getting to move first. So Zero Heat was generated on that. He wasn't actually able to do anything. If he stands still, that'll be fine. Nope, he is a nice pilot and he is going to come forward. Yeah, this is... This is definitely going to be an interestingly rough one. And the reason, of course, why the Arbiter's drawing all the fires is because that sensor lock early on from the Saladin knocked off most of her evasion. And so, vulnerable. Commander. And the AI, of course, knows that you're vulnerable and will go for you because it's not stupid. Could get in your back. I'm looking at 90 armor. I could actually kill that if I managed to hit him enough. I can't guarantee that. It's a pirate one, so anything goes on a catapult. But at least it'll break in half the time. That's the goal. So Apex has got to get on the move, and Apex has got to be moving fast. We've got to get a really decent amount of evasion going on here, but I also really want to get some fire going down to the back of that thing. Could go for the cover here. But that does take away my ability to hit the side of the drill, or the back of the drill sun. Although the side's only a little bit better armored. We do something like... But I do want to contribute to this catapult as well. Part 1, Rack 2. You can put a Rack 2 on this thing? Jeez, that's kind of ridiculous. I want to be able to kill you, but in order to do that, I've really got to put myself out there. A bit of accuracy you're looking at here. Not terrible, actually. I could probably could pull back. Try and get some accurate fire. We might even need to fall back into our little pocket back here. Not super great. Who's more dangerous? That's the catapult. I can't kill the catapult. That's the problem, though. You do have shoot and scoot. All right, so if I just walked, I could get behind cover. So I think that's what we're going to do. Clint is incredibly vulnerable at the moment. But I'm going to shoot that the uh, narc at the catapult. Because I want to basically pull him offline. Okay, the narc hit. Lovely. So now we pull back. To fall back, get rid of our problems, put our evasion back up, protect us a little bit better. Catapult coming forward, not able to move very far, so that's good on us. Trebuchet starting to eat a little bit of fire. We recently up-armored the trebuchet, so that'll help out a little bit. Hopefully he doesn't hit our head too much. Another LRM-15 misfire, but it didn't blow up. What in the hell are you equipped with? He has just already nailed... Okay, so he blew up the other island. I have no idea what the hell's going on with that thing. Let's uh, pull it off the table, because I don't want to deal with it anymore. Uh, I gotta go in this direction so we don't present our back towards the guy up top. So he blew up his all arounds, but he has managed to just nail headshots time and time again. Alright, tore off half of his weapon systems, it appears, but not the other half? What? I don't care, we're just gonna keep the fire going on the catapult. All this Clint is also has me very much concerned. Arbiter's rack 2P, you could go up and right. Uh, we could go up here, yeah, for a little bit of coverage down there, but I don't want to give them the opportunity to steal this mineral field. This mineral field is super powerful. Whoever gets inside here basically gets to command the long-range fight. Yeah, I knew you were going to do that. But that's why I've got stealth armor, which is serving me quite nicely. So I've already knocked off a hand off of him. Unfortunately, that didn't do anything to, well, his weapon systems, because they're all torso mounted at the moment. Okay. Lots of scatter fire going down. So an LBX of some description. The black sheep herself is now up. Okay, the black sheep will take here. I'm going to deal with 69. How about if I just went right in for you? 69, and if I got... 74. I'll take the 74. So we're going to risk things a little bit. We're putting the black sheep right out in the open. But we are giving her a lot of protection, hopefully in the form of the mineral field. Blast him! Ah, oh, you missed one of the medium light one of the yeah, you missed the large lasers. That's very unfortunate. So we've got to keep the fire going down on him right now. I think the trebuchet is gonna tank a bit. Just for this round. Uh 17. How about if I went into dead fires? 
43. It's much better. How about if I got in close? 56. Yeah, that's what I want. So not quite able to get to the middle field, but that will allow him to tank. He's tank packing up three on his defense. So let's see if we can't unsteady this guy. So all of our dead fires plus our... Okay, he's lost his evasion. That's great. Although I think he's going to move first because he moved first last time. Got a fire starter coming in. Cicada, hi. Oh, uh, no PPC? Okay, just medium lasers. You're not porcupine, are you? In which case he wants to get in close in order to use his, uh, use his pop launchers. And the PPC managed to actually... Oh, it's not a PPC. It's a plasma. Okay. Feeling a lot better about that. Probably shouldn't be, but I am. Are you kidding me? That's a champion, not him. But we're about to see a bloody champion. Well, on the bright side, the champion is known to be very poorly armored. So we've got that working for us. Okay, let's pull the catapult off the board now. Since I don't want to have to face a 60 and a 70 ton mech at the same time. Uh, shut off one of the medium lasers to keep us under heat because I don't want to risk that at the moment. Catapult off the board, please. How is he not off the board? I just blitzed him with... A lot of LRM fire. Break it? Explode? Not quite. Yeah. We got a 60 tonner here. A 70 tonner here. And we've been target acquired. By the way, we've already used up both of our helmets. Apex. Uh, ooh, Apex, can you behind him? He has given you that opportunity. And you are going to take it, girl. It's a bit of a risk, but I don't think we're actually in sight of these guys. Because it wasn't showing the lines. Hi! Surprise! Uh, not as much surprise as I had hoped. Okay, time to shoot and scoot, I think. Um, Do we know what kind of engine these got? I don't think we do. We do not, but we do know that we can probably blitz away all of his mech if we fire enough into him. Shoot! Miss entirely, a hit and a hit. Did we spread it out? Not quite. Right torso destroyed, engine destroyed? Is that him? He's tr okay, he's well and truly gone. Lovely. Can I turn around enough if I move here? No. If I move here? Uh, I can, but I present my back to him and I really don't want to do that. So instead, I will... How's my back armor? 75, 60, 60... Yeah, I can take it. I mean, I don't want to take it, but I can. Right there. Into the cover. Yeah, that was a high-tech one. And then we've still got a champion coming in. Hi, my favorite mech in battle tech. So he's been lobbing an LB... He's been lobbing an LB-10 at us this entire time. So, hello. Everybody say hi to my favorite mech. The one I've been looking for. Hi, little guy. I'm gonna have to rip you apart. Uh, you might have an XL engine on board, but I don't think the champion comes stock with it. Although you are the one end, so you're a little bit more advanced than usual. Uh, kill the Drillson? Kill the Drillson. Uh, over there. Yeah, that's gonna be, have to be the best way to do it, because I don't want to present my back to anybody. Yes, we did take this one for all cash. So at least that's working for us. Roger. Chop him in half, use your stealth armor, because you need to move that fast, and hopefully it'll make it... Okay, Drillson's out. So, Champion's down, Drillson's down, Saladin's down, we've got the fire starter left, and then we're working on the top group. If you are anything other than, like, a Locust, I'm going to call shenanigans. Okay, Trebuchet taking a little bit of fire with a Rack LBX? I don't know. Certainly taking a lot of shots here, and I'm hoping you've already gone this turn, because if you're not, you're going to get right on top of the Arbiter, and that's going to hurt. Oh, look, he's entered the battle. So the General is now involved, too. Lobbing a couple of missiles that, luckily for us, haven't managed to actually impact on anything. So, on the bright side, we're going to make 66 cash on this. Or 66% additional cash. Hi. Uh, please die. Roger that. Uh, some penetrators. That's a torso. That's gonna hurt. It did. Um, but he's not dead. So, that's going to make things a little bit more dangerous. <laughs> Just running around the corner. Hi, we're here. Don't shoot us, please. So the torso blow explosion will knock him down on uh, priority for being able to move. So Arbiter, Champion, Cicada, and Wolfhound. Yeah. Okay, being plinked at by him, and we have been acquired. 
So the Arbiter has signaled us out once again. Let's see what we can do with this guy. Are you up? I was really hoping you were put... Now he should be forced minus six after having his torso ripped apart. So Flatline might be able to make that run? I'm hoping. Cicada is being impressive, I suppose. And talk, took a couple of shots. Oh, we're getting a melee attack for the fire starter. Please tell me you're not the fire starter who's got scary plasma weapons. You missed me. Yeah, I figured. Yep, you're the plasma one. So yeah, the uh, he's gonna have two medium lasers, an SRM six launcher. Oh, you're on his rear. No wonder. An SRM six launcher as well as an LB ten. So he's he's an interesting mech. They're known to be very fast, but very poorly armored. So in their stock configuration, obviously, if we can get our hands on one, I'm not going to leave it poorly armored. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, we're not going to be able to get to the Wolfhound this turn, but 69 is all I can guarantee? Are you kidding me? Oh, this is just, this is going to get rough. Swing that axe, go for it. Yeah, I figured we might miss, but I had to give it an opportunity to be simple. We are in cover, and we are being covered by our ECM, so not moving a super far amount is not the worst thing in the world. As you can see, all of those misses. We're still alive, and we're still kicking. Uh, I do want to pull the Black Sheep herself out of there, though. I do want to get her more involved in trying to push up here as soon as we can. So, who's up next? Oxide. Oxide is the general. Okay. Um, so, new plan. Flatline is going off over there to murder the general. I can't afford to do that, though. And Oxide's fire is not going to be so absurdly useful to this battle that he's going to keep me out. So, you know what? I'm ignoring him. 69%. Can I get a sprint for a side shot that everybody can't see me in? Not quite. Although our mask does let us go so very far. I love it. 63. I'll take it. Hi. I'm here to hopefully rip off your limbs. Uh, medium laser. Eh, keep the medium laser off. Okay, we did manage to do quite a bit of damage to that lot. That tore off? Okay, lovely. So he's lost his plasma cannon at this point. He's very badly damaged, and he's not having a good day. Unfortunately, he's feeling cocky enough that he doesn't want to eject just yet. In fact, he's going to fire a single medium laser to a hatcherman, and then run away. Right, you are going to run, I assume. Yeah, he's going to ace pilot his way back down there. That way he's not vulnerable to the Arbiter just popping up and nailing him again. Uh, so... You're too dangerous to leave alive. You just... I can't afford it. So we're going to go right here. How far can I turn? That's the real question. Right there. I'm moving. You're too dangerous to be left alive. Uh, everything on. Dead fire active. Blast him. Yeah, it's not a great chance, but anything I can make to work. And maybe I'll get lucky and we'll move first with him again. Yeah, we gotta chill out. It's unfortunate, but it's a problem. Here's a, a 22. Jeez, he's fast. He's gonna go around and do a melee attack again. This time he did hit for 22 damage. I think I can get around behind him. He's not in cover anymore, which will make him a lot easier to hit now that we don't have to... Now that he's not covered by this. And that'll allow, hopefully, the trebuchet to move out. Yes, Commander. Okay, you get a shot. It's gonna be a beautiful shot. It's a lovely shot. Absolutely perfect. Come around to the side. So we're running our Arbiter being a little bit more defensive with it. Even though the armor's not terrible, it's still a light mech and we don't want to push it too far. Uh, Tagger off. Tagger wasn't quite enough. You know what? Push the heat. We gotta pull him off the table. Okay, got him Hayward. Breaking? Did not break. Okay. Unfortunate. I was really hoping for it. Enemy phase. They're up again. What do they got? Okay, lots of fire coming in. That's the Cicada. Who I have to imagine is equipped with a whole bunch of short range weapons that he just can't get into range just yet. So, Black Sheep herself. Um, Black Sheep herself could go for a blast into his back. That would be a 56. Not good enough. Not good enough. Instead, we're going to focus our rig over here. Hi, line you up. Uh, no medium laser on this one. In fact, uh, no, keep it on. No medium laser. I had to be sure. Okay, so first lance completely destroyed. Second lance hasn't been touched, but we're working on it. Dang, you're dead. And there goes all the LBX fire. 
And we are thanking our lucky stars that we're currently equipped with stealth armor. And he's coming closer. He's coming closer bit by bit. It's terrifying, isn't it? More fire coming down in with his rack two. Or, it's not a rack. What would we call this? A rab two? A rolb two? Rolb two. That's what we're going to do. Oh, and a raven to round things out. And... Okay, a little bit of fire coming in here. We have been narked. He's getting close. Yes, they are. They're getting very close. It's becoming concerning. I'm just amazed that so early in this fight, he was able to rip off the head of two of my mechs. Okay, taking more fire on the trebuchet. I'm just going to let you keep coming, because you, once you come close enough, you're going to be close enough for Flatline, and Flatline wow. is going to kill you. You're not going to be able to stop that. Uh, right here for the coverage. That's a back shot. It's a beautiful back shot, too. I'm down to 30, 30 of these left. I want to save them. Can't. I got to save them. So medium lasers, get the heat down under. Okay, do a little bit more damage to him. Because I've got to save these... I've got to save the dead fire rounds for the champion, because the champion's going to need it. Okay, you're going to come over here. You're actually not going to move. Put your back towards something, maybe? That's just too... That's suicidally dangerous. I got to not move, or... Is that a movement up there? Okay... Who will have an attack on me? Nobody. Nobody will have an attack on me. We're going to take this opportunity to see if we can't go over his back. And tore him out. Good job. Okay, so we've dealt with the bodyguard. Because he was the bodyguard. Uh, that's why I put my back to the champion. Because <laughs> now I can run at the champion. Okay, so next round I'll be able to do some interesting stuff to him. Although I don't want to reveal myself too much because my left hand is a little bit vulnerable. Uh, come around to here. So we're going to hide him. Next turn the hatchet man pops out and tries to axe somebody. That's my plan. That worked out quite nicely as we're starting to pull back, but Oxide's going to get in there. Uh, good, Oxide's pulling back. Lovely. So that'll work out. If Oxide wants to stay at range and just continue occasionally plink away. I think he just uses rocket launchers, so he's down to like two LRM-5s. But if Oxide just wants to continue in that capacity, I'm not going to complain. I need to get down under heat. In order to do that, I'm going to give you also a break turn. We'll go. You're going to sit, you're going to do nothing for this turn. You're going to brace, you're going to get the heat under control. We're going to basically reset ourselves for this Lance of Doom. Cicada coming up. I'm assuming you're a porcupine, aren't you? Are you going to go for a kick? Or... Yeah, you're going to go for a kick. Clang managed to hit us for the minus one initiative. That's not great. Down to 12. Uh, no. Nothing to follow that up. Okay, interesting. Raven moving up bit by bit. Firing possibly another arc? No, nope, I managed to hit us with an SRM. So we are good so far. Let's see what we got. Yep, and now the Arbiter, who's just blasting away and the thing that really scares me about that mech is they've already gotten the one headshot so far oh rack two misfire okay that works i've got your back uh punisher if i do this i don't get to shoot him i <laughs> just need to taunt them one would hope uh is this a back shot it's not quite how about if i normal lrms what am i looking at here got just such a massive dead zone there That's a back shot right there. But it's it's still within my LRM range. I can shoot and scoot with you. 63 is brilliant. And the Raven is 37, 20. I'm not going to shoot at you yet. I'm going to keep you under control. So I'm going to start skirmishing a bit. Have some of this. Let's get this champion a little bit concerned for his life. Still has a pretty decent amount of armor. Not a ton of armor short, but he still has a decent amount. And I can get into coverage, which will allow us to set up for the next round. So we're pulling back, bit by bit, but we're okay for now. Okay, lots of fire coming down on the champion. Ooh, a lot of fire. Especially that leg, starting to get down to almost half. And gonna come forward. Ha oh, ha, buddy, you screwed up. I hope. 
I really hope he just screwed up. I really hope that I didn't screw up somehow. He's got a lot of good tit. He's a, he's a Star League era mech. He's about to have a lot of good stuff. You are equipped with two medium lasers and an unknown. Flamer, I'd bet. What's your back armor looking like? 30? Oh, I can cut through you like a hot knife through butter. All weapons up. Oh, come on. 350% on all of them rolled, rolled tails on me. That's great. Well, at least we're inspired now, so we'll have higher accuracy. I don't anticipate having to make use of an emergency hold position, but it's available when required. Uh, you, 40%. Yeah, I can't go after the champion just yet. I will go after him with Flatline. But I can't afford just yet to try and screw with this champion without taking some control of the backline. So tagged and detected. Unfortunately, the narc managed to miss. So that's not great. Oxide coming forward again. Lobbing a little bit of fire on by way of the crab. Getting a couple of hits on it too. So not the greatest thing in the world. Black Sheep herself is up. Black Sheep's going to stand still. She's going to take aim, and she's going to go over the line. Come on. Serve him up. Come on. Well, that's a leg destroyed, and his back armor's gone. So he's mostly ignorable for the next turn. Because he's not going to be able to hit anything. Ooh. Left torso destroyed on top of that. Okay, in that case... Uh, I gotta protect my right side, actually, so I can't really do that. What I can do is this. Uh -huh. She'll pop out next turn. <sighs> and that was safe. Okay, good. So we're standing up with that one. Punisher! Talk to me. Would you like to get on top of him? With a 50%? Uh, I can't take that side angle from him, because that side angle is where we're gonna be chopping him. But this'll work. Okay, everything on. We're going for the full alpha strike. Line him up. Hello, buddy. Aye, aye. Last of my dead fire ammo. Oh, good. Okay, tore off his arm. Not a super important arm, but now every single arm shot will now hit the torso shot, and that's good. So we've made him a little bit more vulnerable to spread damage. Okay, incoming a lot of LBX fire. He's an ace pilot, so he'll be able to move. Oh, yeah, I forgot he's also got two smalls. Oh, those smalls are, tor are CT mounted. Heat critical. Ammo explosion avoided. Lovely. Flatline? Um, flatline? Are you kidding me? Why can't I cut him? Well, that's some bull. Apparently, I'm not allowed to cut this champion. I'm not happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy on several levels about that. Okay, pull back then. Gotta give him some room. Apparently I can't move behind him. <laughs> okay, so we'll take this opportunity to pull him off the board. How much armor do you got in the front? You got 50. How much armor do you got here? You got 75 health in total. I wouldn't be able to cause enough damage. But your center armor, you've got... Yeah, you're not exactly vulnerable just yet. So go for the leg. Just try and tear it off. You've got a chance. I mean, at the end of the day, you could cause 90 damage. You're not going to now, because you've spread the damage out too far. But, you know, break things. Okay, a headshot. Not bad. I'll work with that. And we're about to get punched by the Arbiter. So the 35-ton Mini Wolverine is going to punch me. He does know that I now can't fight him at close range, so we do have to pull him back as soon as we can. Also managed to plank us. Okay, so we took a tag to the knee. And the skate is going to stand up. So the skate is back in the fight, but he's not going to be able to hit anything this round. Cross your fingers. Because he did land on his back. And he's pushing his luck here. He's already overheated. Not sure what I can do about it, but he's overheating, so I'm happy about that. And he's an ace pilot, and he's got to move forward. I don't really care about you, man. You've got a flamer and a medium laser left. Flatline, how about now? What? Your hatchet's not broken. Apex, Commander. you're up. Move back here. Butcher me a cicada. Jam by ECM? Not for long. Okay, he's dead. 
Do you have an elevation above you on all sides there? Yeah, so we're we're gonna reserve flatline then. Because I've gotta get Flatline's axe on target. And if that means he's gotta move first, then I'm gonna take that. His SRM's mostly on target. So that'll work. He critical, override successful. You've gotta move. You can't possibly stand still. Did he just stand still? Okay, Arbiter gonna attack my Arbiter. So we have Arbiter on Arbiter combat. So there's that going on. And he plinked me. So that's not good. Maybe run around to the back and axe him. Yeah, he didn't move. He just stood there. The little jerk. The fire come down on the trebuchet. Taking quite a lot of that. We're starting to get really light on armor here. I've got to cycle back in the crab because the crab's currently standing up the most amount of armor. But these guys are just rolling brilliantly for their initiative rolls. Also, we're rolling not so great. Okay, more fire coming down. 11 damage on these shots. Okay, now we got problems from Oxide. we got to get out of sight of him. The Black Sheep herself will come out of cover once again. Hello. And because you didn't move, she's going to be really bloody accurate on you. Shut off a medium laser? Can't do it. Um, you push that line. Okay, that'll be probably turn off the torso. Tore off the torso. Okay, lovely. When I shoot you, you'll take it and of course it's going to be painful. It was a two-skull general mission. The general is always a rough mission to take. Oh, the question is, can you beat it? And I think we can. I mean, we're taking out mechs that outton us pretty badly here. Oh, that's perfect. Move there. Alrighty, and you know what the best part about this? Target, target. Let it fly. Aye, aye. Triple medium laser, two of them managed to actually manage to hit the raven. So the raven's starting to get a little bit under pressure. And now the rest of the missiles. Oh, we're getting some penetrating hit. Oh no, they're just scattering on over. Yeah. Flatline doesn't have a target on anybody, so fl Oh, he does. Now he does. Okay, lovely. Uh, come up. We're gonna show our back to Oxide, but that's okay, because we have an opportunity to kill the champion now. He did what you said you can't, probably because he knows better than it has to work. There we go. Goodbye, my beloved champion. Target eliminated. So champion's out. We're down to the Arbiter and the Raven. Apex has the Arbiter. Right? Ooh, no, he moved fast. So Apex may not have this Arbiter. Move back here. Try and protect our back a little bit. We are being... Okay, so the Arbiter is the guy who's jamming us with his ECM blast away. Well, that was tremendous. Managed to miss every single shot on that one, which is unfortunate on several levels. Of course he did. His flatline. Uh, flatline. Kill him. He's more dangerous. Because he got the ECM, which is causing a bit of a problem here. He had an opportunity to go for either one of them, but this was the better choice, I feel. Unless he, of course, misses by 11%. So there is that working against us. I can't blame him too badly because he did manage to kill a champion, so who can be that angry at a guy who killed the champion? Okay, a little bit of fire coming down on us. We are really starting to get thin on armor at this point. Oh, we've got one point of armor left in that leg. Punisher, if you turned around and just gave the Fury and Fire, it would not work out all that great, would it? How about here? Uh, even worse, actually, if if you can believe it. Sprint, get some distance going on. <sighs> Might be a good idea just to ignore him. Our back armor is actually in a fairly decent spot at the moment, so that could be the best option. There we are. Point nine is not good. Yeah, we're... If we want to fire these LRMs, we can't sprint. And Oxide is actually covering his back. I'm going to start laying some pressure down over here. Hi, Oxide. We're being jammed by ECM again. LRMs do off because we don't have a good target. Blast his back. Of course, you missed two out of the three. So his leg is getting quite light, but we're not killing him yet, and that's the problem. So I got to pull this trebuchet away. Okay, another melee attack coming from the Arbiter. He's probably out of ammunition at this point. Managed to hit us again. Just beaten down on us. At least he didn't move that far. And another tag. This Arbiter has just been the bane of everything so far. He's managed to nail two headshots throughout this match so far. Oxide gonna back up. Target the trebuchet. 
And he's through our leg armor. Uh, luckily, there's nothing in the leg. So there's that, but we don't want him to blow it apart completely, because if he pulls that one off, then we're in a lot of trouble. Okay, sprint. Uh, can I be in cover? There's no way for me to be in cover, but I can get myself exposed. So large laser off. That might allow us to keep the medium laser on. It does fire. Okay, good. You actually managed to do a pretty decent amount of damage to his torso. I kind of wished you had managed to hit that leg. That would have made my life a lot easier. Uh, looks like the raven beat us. Yeah, the raven beat us. And the raven is retargeting? It is. Okay, good. Well, not great. I mean, after all, her armor is just paper thin at this point. But that does mean we'll have an opportunity to pull the trebuchet out. Oh, thank God. That was the haywire. So the haywire managing to miss will allow us to keep our decent accuracy. Aye, aye. Apex. Can you just kill him? 54. You might be able to do it, actually. Right behind him. We're going to move, move everything to the firewall and see if we can't rip him apart. Come on, structure exposed. Lots of crits on him. Reporting critical hit. Flatline? Aye, aye. You're gonna come over here. I need this taken care of. And that hopefully will allow me to use my long ranges to finish him off since we critted him pretty badly. Okay, tore off most of that mech. Unfortunately, probably should have done it from the other direction. I was hoping he would hit a torso instead of just an arm to transfer damage on through. Because that did basically nothing at all to Arbiter moving slightly to attack our Arbiter. Clang, but we're alive, and that's the important bit. And his back is now towards a lot of other people. Heavy hits, okay, a plink. Didn't actually manage to connect on that one. Okay. Black sheep will be... Oxide. Duck oxide. Oh, we're starting to lose the leg. We gotta pull him out of here. Or at least we gotta get him behind cover. Uh, black sheep. Good to go. It's a good target, isn't it? Yeah, it is. How much you got left in your back? Uh, according to the black sheep, how much you got left in your back? You have no idea. That is unfortunate on several levels. So we're going to move right here. That's not good enough. It needs to be the high accuracy that I know it can be. So we're going to get right here. On my way. here oh, shoot. No, I left one of them off. Damn it. I tore off his leg, though. So that'll help. You gonna eject, man? Yeah, well, that got us a little bit more under heat control, but having forgotten to turn that on has probably cost us pretty bad. Order. But what Punisher can now do is pull back behind cover and lob some fire. This match is unfortunate. Nah, this match is great. I'm enjoying this quite a bit, actually. Uh, fire away. Come on, I just need a little bit of raining going down in the back. Got it! Arbiter's out. Flatline's up. It's time for flatline. Are you kidding me? He's blocking the area. Okay, flatline is going to preserve. Apex is up. Apex right here. Pull this guy off the board. Of course not. Uh, I do believe the black sheep will have her move first. Oxide is probably the one on the move next. And he's in sight! He's gonna fire on the crab, which is good, because the crab is seeing a pretty decent amount of health at the moment. Although, 11 damage out of those LRMs is pretty severe. Okay, the black sheep will pull back a little bit. So that she can fire down on him, which I do think we can kill him. Okay, all the large lasers are on this time. Uh, the Raven has an XL engine. Take Come on, give me that XL engine kill. You're kidding. Okay, Punisher. How much ammo you got left? You got 120 rounds, you don't care. Target him. Tear off the torso. There, okay. So that's a nice big payday right there. So that puts us at the 66%. Now we just gotta deal with Oxide. That comes up to Flatline. Flatline can sprint. 
And Flatline might actually be in range next round. And no shot, so I'm going to brace. No, no point in being first if you can't see him anyway. So let's sprint you at... Ooh, no, I'm, I don't dare risk her. At the point that she's at, 11 damage per missile is just too much for the Arbiter to handle. So get the Arbiter down under cover again. She tanks a ton of damage. I mean, that that cannot be denied. Alright, come on, Axide. Come towards me. Yes, you did. Surprise. Oh, is my electronic countermeasures a bit too much for you to handle? Lovely. Good to go. Black Sheep, it's time to spring the trap. I read you, Commander. Moving out. Surprise! Yep, we're going to concentrate as much fire as we can. Punisher, got my attention. you have a target? Yep, we're just going to radio it in because I don't dare show him off because his leg is almost gone as well. Right torso destroyed, right arm destroyed, upper arm destroyed, taking an injury. Didn't make him unsteady. That's unfortunate, but we're done with that. Flatline, you're the follow-up. Flatline attack from this side because that'll hopefully channel as much damage into the CT as we can. Now let's see if we take him out. Enemy leader destroyed. Whew! Now that was a fight. That was good. Oh, that was good. We took on an advanced catapult. We took on a one-end champion. We took on pirates. We took on... That was brilliant. And the worst damage we took was the trebuchet's tor the trebuchet's one leg got a little bit too badly damaged but we made 1.5 million c bills on that that was brilliant the worst damage we took was the trebuchet's leg who almost got to half health there the arbiter just got pounded early on in that fight but still managed to come out f all right I'm surprised we took headshots on the hatchet man and the crab right off the bat from that arbiter and they still kept going through strong because we've got spiked helmets on both of them so if anybody was going to take a headshot it was best that it went down on these two so that worked out great we're not going to get any of that salvage we got an arbiter part but we're alive we're 1.5 million sea bills richer and that was a hell of a mission Ran into the champion that I wanted, but hey, at the end of the day, that's a victory. That's a pretty significant victory. <sighs> yeah. There, yeah, there were four catapult parts. I don't know how we took so much of that catapult and oh yeah, the XL engine. But still, we got it kind of lucky with the number of catapult parts. So that was not bad. I mean, it would have been even better salvage, but that was not bad at all. That worked out quite nicely. And Raider, you thought we were going to do poorly. That did great. We'll probably spend like 60,000 60, C-bills on repairs, though, at the very least. We may even spend 120-something. That's my current fear. It's hundred between 120 and 150,000 C-bills. 73. Not bad, but 34 days to repair. I think it might be time to leave. Depending on how badly the repairs is. Think it might be time to leave. Yeah, the trebuchet is 13 days. That was a hell of a battle. We're all alive. We're all alive and we didn't take too much damage. We really didn't take all that much damage. So we're 2.2 million sea bills. We do not have anything currently in the pipe for upgrades on the Argo. We're four days away from the end of the month. So it's not like we're getting another mission in before the end of the month anyway. So navigation. Star map. So the current thought is we head south. Is that we head towards uh, head towards Capellan Confederation territory. Because that's kind of where I think we want to go. No, nah, I wouldn't have tapped out to that. We had a we have a good lance. We've got a fairly solid lance. I tap out for other reasons, like being abs absurdly outnumbered. But we actually, because they were funneled into that area up there, that actually worked out quite nicely. 
Do I dare go to a two skull place? What is uh, Galatia? Galatia is a one skull? Maybe a one and a half skull, not a three. We have planetary difficulties out, so. <laughs> a four and a half skull? No, thank you. Uh, that's a one skull, which we could go to for more missions. Actually, what kind of world is this? Extensive volcanism, former Starlink pres Ice world! Ooh, that would work out quite nicely for us. We have a lot of hot mechs. Large populations, mega cities, moons, tainted atmosphere. Well, the moons might actually be dangerous. But what do you think? We head to Zavijeva? Who's who actually is here at the moment? Or is he not there? Oh, he's up there, okay. Bell's Battalion is uh slightly to the north of us. So I think we head to uh Zavijava. What do you guys think? No? Raider says no. Raider has no interest in going to Zavijava. Where do you think we should go, Raider? I'm not going to the four and a half skull mission. You can you can say you can just ignore anything if you're telling me to go to Space Australia. But I think Zavi Java is a good idea because it takes us towards the intersection point of the three houses right here. The moon battles would be dangerous if we got moon battles, but it is an ice planet. So there will be a mix between the two. At the end of the day, we do have a chopping mech, so that could work out quite nicely for us. Extensive volcanism. I'm not taking a three skull. We're definitely not taking Space Australia. Two skull could be a bit dangerous for us. Because, well... Our lance did get kind of battered. What about loot? What about loot? Is there a planet loot? Bollocks, Devil's Rocks, Castor, Lipton, Pacifica, Thorn. I'm not seeing a planet loot. So Alpha is a half skull, which might be a little bit too low. We could go to Zosma. Let's see, Zosma has geothermal, high gravity, Martian world, moons, planet-wide, poor. You want to find a planet with good loot? Well, yeah. We would like to. Bone Company is on Pacifica? Yeah, but that just means we could work for them on the Pacifica. We could, you know, head all the way over here to Comstar. For somehow Comstar has managed to generate their own little sector down there. The Nebula is not good. Samosa. You'd go Zavi. Devil's Rock. Nebula. Oliver. Zavi Java. Yeah, I'm I'm really thinking Zavi Java. Because Zavi Java has a former Star League presence. Go to the phone company. Well, Zavi Java takes us in that direction. So, I'm feeling Zavi Java. It's moving us towards where we want to go. It's an 18-day trip, which will allow us to be fully kitted out and ready to rock. It's only 25000 to get there. So, I'm really feeling it. And also, if we do desperately want to go to Comstar, we can swing out their way. Because we will be closer. Because we can't make this in one jump. So, if we do want to go there, we're going to have to stop off at a planet anywhere. So, Zavi Java gets us closer if we do want to go try and fight Comstar. And it also puts us closer to being towards the middle of everybody. So that's the plan. We go and travel. So let's hit the engines and get on out of here. Let's pause real quick. Actually, no, there's no reason to pause since we've got... Well, all of our mechs are going to be in the bay for a little while. And prepare to hit the financial report. Financial report. Hey, financial report. Lovely. Probably should build something as long as we're traveling. Let's go quick check other ship upgrades. Because now we're at 1.5 million and we should be able to make it before the end of the month. Uh, picking up scaffolding, I think, for the tech, po the tech point increase. We do want to move towards the third mech bay because having a third mech bay is really powerful. But scaffolding will get us up for a couple of the repairs that we're currently doing. Scaffolding will be ready just after that. And boss. We've got two mechs in the bay and they're going to be done in two days. So... Let's come to our mech bay, and everybody, let's take a look at our favorite rapier who's been sitting patiently in the bay for us to finally look over in his direction. Let's see. He still kept his pirate engine, so there is that much. And he kept his fusion core. Nice. Okay, what's he short on? Uh, he is lacking four heat sinks, so we are missing one, two, so we got two, so he's missing two more. 
What do you think we should build out of this thing? So we got the tagger already, we got the haywire and the narc. We could probably put another... I think we might have a narc form anyway. Uh, yes, we do have a narc launcher. Put that there. He's got his stealth X armor for additional protection. Vehicle flamer, I'm not a fan of him. Work on the dinged up there, stuff. Yep, that's what we're doing. Starting to patch up our rapier now. So, let's see here. I think I'm going to pull the vehicle flamer off. I'm not a huge fan of them. They weigh a ton, and all they give you is a single flamer. So, that frees up a lot of weight, although they do have no... They do have no penalties towards heat, really. Uh, I can't put on a fluid gun because we'd have no ammunition for it. We know that the narc and the tag stack, so we want to put that on there, too. We'll turn them into basically an information warfare mech. So we need to find ourselves a LRM-5. Because that will allow us... And we have one. Good. That will allow us to make use of our NARC LRM ammo. Oh, we've already got one, so we don't need one. So how much damage will this do? Well, deal... Yeah, not too much. Don't be afraid to rip out the Stealth X and the Warfare, since they're incredibly low quality gear. Uh, we don't have any real better quality gear to put on it, though. I mean, the Stealth X armor doesn't cost us any weight, and the Warfare Suite, well, it gives us increases to other systems as well. Like, it's useful in that regard. Uh, let's see. Beagle Active Probe would be nice. Oh, it's... The Warfare Suite is blo blocking an Active Probe, so there is that. So, yeah, we will consider that. But we've still got seven tons. At the end of the day, we're going to have a little bit of trouble filling it. So we do have some listen kill SRM ammo. Plus one accuracy with short-ranged missiles. But I don't want to mix too many ammo types on a single mech. Although this is more like having a narc than an additional ammo type. It's a two-ton narc, but hey. Uh, do you have any ballistics? You don't. <laughs> could put a large laser on him. Sort of gear him up to being sort of the... Which version is it? The th it's not the 3M. It's 3L? The version with the large laser. Oh, let's not forget. Armor. <laughs> yeah, that fills out most of our weight, doesn't it? So. If we pull off the Stealth X armor and the Warfare Suite, it becomes much more vulnerable. It's easier to hit. For a lot of reasons. Uh, he is going to be rather quickly. Rather quick because of his pirate core engine. Takes up a lot of space, but it's quite useful to have. They already got an ultralight gyro, so I don't want to don't want to do anything else with that. Well, I'd like to pull it off actually. That would put us at 1.88 tons. Your medium laser. What's your heat efficiency at the moment? 30 for 14. So we're good on that. So we throw this on, this on. Fills up. Where's my? Oh yeah, and. Do something like that. From there, pull from there. And then I put the heat sinks in the legs. And then we'd put the narc ammo out here with the LRM5. Actually, let's get this separated out so one catastrophic hit won't annihilate everything. The narc and a haywire. Tagger out to the edge. Oh, crap. No, I can't do that. Oh, because I've only got one slot for it. Okay, keep the tagger there. And a composite. Yeah, could squeeze in a little bit more weight doing that. So let's try that. Uh, gives us 0.5 more tons, because i got to put the narc beacon back on. So, narc, tagger, tag, LRM5, narc. Which is not... Oh, well, it's a Haywire. So a Haywire, a NARC, LRM, a Tagger, and a Tag, because we know they stack, because we we checked that in the one mission, so Tagger and Tag do, in fact, stack. Uh, gives us half a ton. We could put a put an AMS on. They do. We checked it. So the Talendel, the, when we checked after we got shot by a Tagger and a Tag, both status effects appeared. One's tagged, and the other one is tagged EOS. So they do stack, it appears, because they both showed up. 
Now, keep in mind, if you're thinking they don't stack because you're on a more recent version, if you're on the most ver recent version, there have been several other things that we've also found out that are not the same between the most recent version and the version that we're playing. Things like Artemis 4, and, uh, Artemis 4 uh, grants you a, an advantage just for having the targeting computer, but in the most current version it doesn't. But we double-checked, and it says tagged and tagged OS, both being as two, uh, two things that showed up after we got hit by them. 0.5 tons, what can we do with that? Our heat efficiency is terrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's 52, Jesus. It's not quite sustainable, is it? Pull off the medium laser. That'll bring us down to 42. So it's a little bit more sustainable, and that gives us half a ton. So we could throw on an AMS. <laughs> Uh, where would I throw the AMS? This side. A little bit more missile defense. Stuff is busted. Unused tonnage, that's a lie. So, let's see. Is there anything else we want to do to this thing? We're basically making a, uh... Making a mech that'll try and take control of people with support systems. So, Haywire, Narc... Tag, Tagger, AMS, Warfare Suite, but the Stealth X makes that a selfish Warfare Suite. Because by putting a, from what I understood from the way it was described, putting Stealth Armor takes away the Warfare Suite's ability to uh, give anybody else the bonus for being around it. That's how it was explained to me. Might be wrong, but... So, it's got to be a little bit hotter. Generates 6 heat per turn. Just for existing. Which is a little bit rough. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I'd ever swap out the, um... I don't think I'd ever swap the Arbiter for this thing. But if the Arbiter was down for a long period of time, I suppose it could work. Uh, I don't have any upper arms. I've only got hands. So I need upper arm actuators, unfortunately. So, no major accuracy bonus there. Could take a couple of things off to try and get a very large engine. That's always an option. No, I think that'll be good for now, and we can change it out later. So, we'll fix that mech. It will be ready to go in 36 days, so not for a while. Alrighty. So everybody else is pretty much ready to go. So, we're going to sit here, attached to the side of this jump ship for a little while. And leap. And here we are. Hello, Union Dropship. These guys actually show up occasionally on missions. Working on the crab is complete. We've arrived at our destination. Lovely. We've made it to Zavijava. What's left to be repaired? The Arbiter is a day away. The Arbiter is repaired, as is the scaffolding. So 30 days away from the rapier, we have just arrived on Zavijava. We're just going to do a quick refresh of the contracts on this one, because it won't show up properly until we go there and then return. Hello? Okay, so... Eh, a little bit of a light mix of contracts. We got a couple of two and a half skulls, though. Uh, escort and an escort. So, might be worth taking these. Escort missions can work out kind of okay on you, but it might be a bit dangerous. Uh, lots of escorts. A battle, a recovery is good. Capture bases are okay. Assassinate war criminal is not a harder assassinate, and it's one and a half skulls for three of thirteen, so that's pretty perfect for us. We'll definitely we'll be taking that mission soon. Uh, an assassinate two of nine, eh, not so great, but hey. Uh, defend base at a half skull is always worth taking because they're easy at that point. Last mech standing is a straight up battle for absolutely terrible salvage and pay. So that's not great. Comstar would like to work with us against Deliran, so that's nice. Uh, they want us to capture base, half skull, also pretty good. And a lot of defend bases, okay. So this is not the most brilliant setup we could have ever gotten. I would have preferred a lot more battles and a couple of assassinates, but it is what it is. But that's going to do it for today's stream. So we've been rocking and rolling for about two and a half hours and did a pretty decent job, I think. Managed to finally leave Galatia on to greener pastures, as it were. Our current lance is doing pretty solidly. I'm pretty happy with how they're all turning out. Uh, I would like to make this just a little bit faster. I would like to get a couple of other things going just to make these slightly better. But we're definitely moving forward with it. I'm very happy with the way things have been turned out. So, 
I have been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I post one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment. I will see you all in the next episode.